Hello and good evening, chat. Welcome to the stream. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for the support. I'm very excited for some more d and I'm ready to dragon and dungeon. Also, have fun at PAX, folks who are, who are going. I see Calvi's going out there. I think Nicole's on their way there after this session. So have have fun if you're if you're doing a PAX this weekend. Uh, I don't have a lot of preamble for y'all today. Uh, welcome. If if you're new to the stream and you're like, hey, I'd like to watch these VODs or, or know when the next episode's coming out. We've got a VOD channel, which is just stream archives. Um, and then we also have a Discord that tells you uh, the schedule for D&D &D or if I have special streams. But uh, those are the best way to keep in touch with the show if you're interested. Um... Other than that, I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna unmute here and we'll say hi to our friends and we'll get going. We'll get we'll get a nice early start. Job like a contract mm. from a big company. Hello. Ooh, congrats. Hello. 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 How are you all this evening? Excited. How Very are you? excited. That's what I, I'm excited too. Yeah. Ah, whoa. Yeah. Let's all be excited. Wow. I'm excited <laughs> that I've been Whee! subscribed to Dan Jones for four years. Four, four years. years. That's wow. too many years. That's oh almost God. a year. I still remember. <laughs> <That> almost. <laughs> almost a year. I remember the first time you came in my chat, Joe. I think it was a, a Monster Hunter stream. And I was like, I, 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 can't, I, I can't do anything stupid. Joe Cat's hanging out in my chat. <laughs> Wait, did I have a YouTube channel four years ago? Oh, I did. Fuck. I'm pretty sure you did. <laughs> four years ago was Time. like 2015, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, oh, I remember now. You sang the Beetlejuice theme. I, I did. Remember. I did. You're, yeah, you did a really good rendition. I remember now. I was, I was, I was definitely not nervous. Aww. Um, but when I get nervous, I sing the Beetlejuice it's, theme. It's, it's, <laughs> they go hand in hand. <laughs> um, but are you all excited for some uh, some D and D? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, very yeah, excited. Very yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 maybe, maybe. Um, Does anyone have anything now. before we get into the the little recap? We got a, a a quick little previously before we can get going. But just in case I forgot something, I think Barry, I gave you the statted out sword in your inventory. You I think you everyone should you. have. The items they bought from the chameleon air oh. in their inventory as well now too. <laughs> yes, I use the that as just a chance ever. to say his name yep. again. Mm -hmm. He's showing the party, right? Uh, 100%, yeah. You guys gave him an invitation, right? Yeah. He's, he's yeah, part yeah, of the yeah. party. No, that was, that was absolutely not. I will kill him. <laughs> you can't do the voice for a long time, right, Dan? <laughs> oh, totally, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's been seriously injured. He can't speak anymore. <laughs> Wow, weird. Oh, he's become a <gasps> mute. Oh, yeah, he darn. took on a vow of silence. Yep, yep. <laughs> what a shame. All canon things. <laughs> Let's do that. Switch over there, and then I'll start some. It's a nice, like, nice little happy music to start our our adventure today. There we are. Mm -hmm. We'll do a little. There we are. Wow, look at us. It's like no time has passed. Wow. Look at us. Still still hanging out there in Full Grove. This is too sad. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, is there a touching moment already? There's a touching <laughs> moment. Oh, just Geldek pulled someone aside. No, it is dead. <laughs> <laughs> I am here to give you character development. <laughs> <laughs> you are now a character. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Well, 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 a little character. Twilight Princess, Barry's favorite game. I don't know if you guys do that. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, previously, after a month or so of spending time alongside one another, our group of heroes now titled the Flower Crowns 
are readying themselves for their first long journey outside the city of Filgrove. Upon returning the Defiler staff to Adokus Thandar, a member of the Council of Alithia and a previous member of the Champions of Virtue, our group was offered a deal to travel to the city of Northcliffe and continue to help locate multiple powerful artifacts that were scattered across the realm. The party was mostly in agreement, told Adokus they will give their final word come the following morning. Uh, that night, celebration was had for the victories and accomplishments the group had achieved in some short in the short time of knowing each other, and we now join our group as the sun rises on another day. Uh, it is it is a, a lovely fall day. Uh, there's a, a crisp chill to the morning air. Um, the, the, the brass squid, the inn that you've become familiar with, is starting to bustle, and uh, a crowd is starting to gather for the, the, the morning buffet that they definitely have, and I didn't just make that up now. Um, so how would you all <laughs> like to start your day? You know, I'm gonna start my day by rolling for the bag of many things. Oh, of course. Oh. <laughs> you know, you know, I gotta do that. I also need on. It's a new day. I also have another check. To to, to question mark is, is that now or is that? Is so that you, when I I'm would, going to bed. We didn't you talk would, about you would that. probably do it going to bed if you want to okay. like sacrifice some time. So like, you could either do it when there's downtime. Which, hey, heads up, there's probably gonna be downtime this session for you. Um. Or sleep. you can like sacrifice time during your sleep, because it basically, uh, for for those of you who are wondering, um, I'm giving uh, a truly uh, a chance to do some tinkering, and to do mm -hmm. a tinker check, it's it's going to be basically like a, a, a skill roll, and you need to set aside two hours to make that time. Like that's the actual time of you fiddling and building stuff. So if you want, you can like do four checks over the span of night, but make yourself exhausted because you don't get any sleep, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can, you can do that, uh, basically at any time you have, like, hey, my character probably has two hours of free time at this moment. Rad. Um, Appreciate it. Yeah. Not a problem. But first, it, eh, 52. Oh, you already rolled this one, I Barry. already rolled 52. What the hell is with these dice? That was um, a ship in a bottle. Yeah, yeah but this time, uh, it's a glass ship, six. and there's a little bottle inside it. <laughs> Just six. <laughs> six. Um, okay. You you reach in, you feel a, a, a metallic device. You pull it out. It, it looks to be like a, a small jingle bell. Just a, a, oh. a singular bell. Oh. It was a faint little been, jingle. Have I been blessed by Lady Jingle? Maybe. Lady Jingle foreshadowing. Ooh. Could be a blessing or a curse. She'll want that no back. one knows. A... <laughs> Sweet. A bell. Can I tie it to the hilt of my green ribbon sword? Absolutely. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> It'll be obvious for miles around. Um, as for the folks, oh, so uh, for those of you who don't know, Trilby lives in Philgrove. His family's there, so usually yeah. the entire party is at the the Brass Squid, uh, an inn, and Trilby is at home, tucked up in his race car bed. <laughs> mm hmm. Um. For the rest of the group, as you come downstairs, you can see, uh, seated in the corner, uh, Adokus is actually, uh, sitting waiting, and he has a small little plate of food and a, a cup of tea, and he just seems to be watching the morning crowd. Not there for you, just there for the food. Mm hmm All right, bye. Yep. <laughs> Goodbye, mother. <laughs> I'm off to... Adventure. You you had a sweet little goodbye with yeah. your, your 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 family. Yeah, they know what's up. They know. They're mm -hmm. they're they're ready. Their little bird to and fly I, out I, of the I, nest. I I got um all those magical papers from mm -hmm. mother. In case you, in case you, you're homesick and you want to hear from your family, you can write a name and it magically goes to them. It sounds expensive. I mean, there's not a lot. There's like six pieces of paper. Uh, I I wrote it down. Um, some wait. Hopefully I wrote down in my paper. notes, not on my character sheet. Uh, fifteen papers. Well, there you go. Man. Fifteen. Good thing you wrote it down because it was about to change to six. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna mosey on out and head over to the brass squid. Okay. 
where we in media res to sorry to DM for you. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, so the rest of the crew, uh, I'm assuming you you gather your belongings from the room, make your way downstairs. If you want to eat, mm -hmm. you're more than welcome to. If you want to speak to Adokus now or uh, attack him as a group, you know, the choice is yours. Verbally, of course. Uh, verbally, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I mean, you could try. <laughs> <laughs> attack him with our pointy weapons. He's just sitting there defenseless. <laughs> When he trusts That's us he most is when he's most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I imagine Cole, Cole can't eat breakfast, so he's just <laughs> hanging around where everyone else is. Yes, same. Gelnek will come to the table of which is designated as ours and order a typical breakfast with hash browns. Oh, <laughs> they, you know they got good hash browns. They got a good hash browns. I imagine we've got our own table at this place by now, yeah? Pro probably. Just, no. like, yeah, probably. like everybody like knows table, that's yeah. their table. Yeah. Okay. I'm probably just going to also order food and, and sit with everyone else and just be there. Okay. Yeah. You all you all have a, a nice little hearty breakfast. Um other other than if you wanted to wrap any last minute things up in the town, the only plans for you today are to meet with Adokus and discuss if you're actually taking his offer up or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also getting on the skyship because it does leave today. <laughs> <laughs> we he he did, did mention that. that. First. If he did <laughs> not what? mention that, Dan's mentioning that, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I'm pretty sure we were all in agreement of uh, going, yeah? And, like, yeah, going mm -hmm. along with this lord's mission for us to collect, what, artifacts? Lost weapons? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I said we're all taking this job, yeah? Yeah, I think so. And yeah. I remember that we we saw the, the hag leaving town. Oh, that, um, was, the, that was just for... The, the play off screen. That was off screen. Off screen. Uh, we don't know. Dramatic. You don't know that. Yeah. I mean, you could go <laughs> visit <dramatic> on a <laughs> whim if you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it feels like the hag left. I don't. It just, I haven't got a vibe. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, smell you know, that? Kind of think... Doesn't smell like hag anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. Weird how that is. Yeah. Um. Going through my notes, I'm trying to see if we have any like open threads still. Like, other than the hag, obviously. That's very open. Um, I need to get a scabbard for my green ribbon and jingle bell sword. I imagine that... when you picked it up from the blacksmith, they gave you something to carry it in. Rad. Then we're good. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. I don't know about you. I'm good. I'm great. I'm great. <laughs> you are pretty great. You just hear that you from above. <laughs> You're great. <Not? laughs> I think we had potentially thought about asking the other um, Burning Spears, like, why they decided to lie about um, the the guy turning into a werewolf. But that was sort of like a, like, if we, if we bump into them, maybe, and really feel mm. like pushing it. Or did we talk to them already? And I forgot. I think we um, might have. We went. We, did? we got okay. the, the money from Han. I know we did yeah. that. But I remember, like, we kind of just, like, went along with their lie and we thought about, like... I think we kind of assumed that they, they were worried about, like, repercussions. Right. From mm -hmm. the rest of the Burning Spears. Because we solve the problem and there will be no repercussions from it, so why complicate matters further? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, regardless if we... Do remember slash learned their reasons. I think the problem is more or less been resolved. For sure. We can say goodbye to Derek. Make sure Derek's yes. okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gonna make sure Derek's okay. He's he's like in the middle of like picking up your empty dishes. He goes, "Hey guys, uh, any good plans today?" <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will be leaving. Oh, very soon. Uh, like for for good, or you'll be back like normal. Unsure, maybe forever, maybe back tomorrow, depending on how things go. Airship could crash. 
many possibilities in this universe. Well, uh, hang on, let me, I, I gotta at least tell Gavel, and he, he runs to the back with his dishes, and you, you hear a, a small commotion behind the, uh, the kitchen doors, and then Gavel comes out, and he rushes over the table and goes, is, is it true? You're, you're all leaving? Don't everyone speak at once! <laughs> everyone. I'm afraid so. Well, uh, is, is there anything we could do for you? You guys have been such a huge service for the town, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to always have a room here for you if you ever come back. Erlek does have one thing he would request. You name it. When legends are told, oftentimes great warriors are sung about, but not the farmers which grow their crops. Gilnek would wish to take a trinket with him to remember you by as the farmer which grew the crop that becomes the legend that is Gilnek and the flower crowns. I, I, uh, yeah, uh, he's just kind of like looking around, like patting him down. He's like, uh, what, any, anything you want specific? Like, just anything? Anything that you believe has your soul and heart in it. But not too, not too important that will take away from in. Uh, okay, okay, hang on, hang on. And he, he rushes behind the, uh, the bar counter. You can see him fiddling around a bit. And he pulls out a, uh, like a, a, a small little tankard. And it's got like a, a, a brass little emblem on it. And you can see the brass squid carved into it. He goes, this is one of the, the first mugs I made for the tavern. We only did a few because uh, costs weren't worth it, but maybe maybe this will do? Hmm. Yes. And in return, Gelnick is going to hand him one of his uh, mace maracas, <gasps> of which he has two. Oh! Whoa. Oh my, I, can't, I cannot take this. Are you, are you sure? A castle is made up of many bricks. We are all simply bricks sometimes. We must work together. The ones at the top often get the sunshine the most. But you at the bottom, of which hold the entire castle up, is also important. Gemnek sees that. For we shall, would not have come so far without your hospitality and assistance. I, I don't know what to say, Gemnek. This is... I, I'll find a good place for it on the wall, and it'll always be on display. People will know this was the this was the tavern where Gelnick started. The fra the flower crowns had their their claim to fame, and people will know that this tankard is what kept us alive and healthy and hearty during our travels. He extends like a hand to shake, grabs it firmly with a good old shake. Oh, he gives he gives a, a hearty squeeze, and you can see he's got he's got that like smile where he's he's holding back the emotions, but he's just giving you a, a nice firm nod. Uh, thanks for hosting us for so long. Your hospitality here has been great. Ah, uh, it's it's really the least I could do. We 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 you saw we don't have a lot of customers, so if I can help some folks coming through town, it's the least I could do. You've been great. Thank you. Where so um where are y'all where y'all headed off to? Do we know? Yeah, do we know? North Cliff. Any specifically like we know about our quest, but do we know specifically yeah. what locations we're going? Did you say North Cliff? That's right. Oh yeah. In my mind, Troby's still on his way to the brass squid. I'm, this is above table. We just hear his ethereal voice. <laughs> just walking. I can't wait to go to Northcliffe. <laughs> I've seen pictures in my books. The Northcliffe distant jingle of the bell getting closer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's a lot easier to keep track of. Now. Oh, wow. Yeah, he is. Oh, my goodness. Northcliffe, which is... Gelnek is still confused as to why it is south, despite being named Northcliffe. First, first learning... Tom and tongue is strange with all grammatical strangeness, like why is this George and not Gorge, and why is this Gate and not Jate? And now Northcliffe is in South? The <laughs> common language very, very Someone confusing. made a mistake, I'm sure of it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they maybe they meant north as in, you know, like uh, like like above, like oh it could go north of ten bucks, you know, that kind of thing. I don't know. <laughs> 
Mm. Maybe they made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they Yo, liked the sound really of it. Invested in this. Maybe they, they randomly generated a bunch of fantasy sound and words, put them on a map. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the city's the city's hundreds of year old, so maybe, maybe, maybe it was north back in the day, Gelnek. I don't know. Uh, perhaps. But I hear it's uh, unlike anything else in Orlon Hell, Elithia. If for all that I know, it's a uh, it's it's a sight. I've never been myself, but uh, you know, if if you ever find your way back, I'd love to hear all about it. I, 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 I regret to inform you all that if you look at the map, West Mount is south of Northcliff. Oh, no. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's not even what it's, again, it's southeast actually. of Northcliff. <laughs> I'm going to put no. the most north called like southeast. It's just a like city. I had a defense for Northcliff. It's like, you know, that could be the northernmost set of cliffs. Uh, yeah, right. It could be. But I've got nothing for West Mount. Uh, it's this on the feels... western continent. There yeah, bam. No, no, no. This you know, you know what it is. in reality. Ohio's in the yeah. Midwest. I, so, oh, yes. I, what, <laughs> I know why it's Midwest called West Mount. Yeah. I know why it's called West Mount. Because look why? to the west of it, there's mountains. Ah, mountains. Whoa. I see. Yep. There you go. All right, there we go. Yeah. We're very good. simple people. Saved it. <laughs> yeah, they're very simple people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe the people on the, sh the southern shore of Northcliff were like, there's a cliff to the north. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, true. They didn't know there was more north. Um, Anywho, um, <laughs> goblin word language is way way simpler. Um, uh, he 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 gives you a, all like a, a hearty little handshake or hug. Um, and he's like, well, if we, if you need anything else, let us know. Uh, you know, table's yours for the day, as usual. And he he and Derek uh, return back to waiting tables and taking orders and stuff from the rest of the patrons. <laughs> oh, anybody else got any further business? Or no, we, we proceed. Uh, uh, Tr Trilby, burst open the door. Trilby is here. You I, I, I just ran into Bill and his brother, Bill. We're wrapping up every arc. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing great. <laughs> Remember them? Oh, flashback no. scene. No. <laughs> it's one of the dwarf we found in the in under whatever. Why would two yeah. two persons of siblings be named same thing? Very confusing. Common language continues to confuse Galnek. See that? No, that's all dwarven. That's. Uh, uh, it actually, uh, it sounds different in dwarven. Yeah. Ah. Uh, so simply, Bill common is stupid. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's like Bill and Bill. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Trilly, uh, makes up with the, meets up with the rest of the party, jingling all the way. Just a gentle little jingle jingle. Um, Welcome back, strangely dressed boy. Thank you, double leader. I'm, I'm, think I'm ready to leave the, the, the my childhood home. But ah, I think you are. With all of you at my side. Just like Gelnick, you are going on pilgrimage of your own to become stronger, more intelligent, legendary, and perhaps stinkier. Hopefully. Ho ho hopefully? <laughs> I don't want to yes. be stinkier. B ah, but you develop strong stench to bring home, make tribes stronger, and ward off beasts who cannot handle strong stench. Is, is strength tied to stinkiness? Sometimes. Then why did my mom want me to take all those baths growing up? Ah, because soap is disgustingly horrible. I, it is. <laughs> oh my god! I don't... Stinkiest of smells. Gelnek knows. I have so much to learn, Double Leader. <laughs> About this, this time. Oh, go big ahead. step for you. <laughs> is anybody... This is a big step for you. It's it's almost as big a step as you can take, Coil, because you're really tall and your strides are very long. Maybe even bigger than that. Big? I. That's pretty big. What's have the furthest you, you've ever you... been? 
never mind. That's a bigger conversation. <laughs> right, what's what's up? Up? <laughs> have any of you have any of you been to Northcliffe before? I haven't gone. This is my first time. Mm, I, I read Gannick, about it. Not particularly. What do we know about Northcliffe, Dan? Please give me a roll of history check. All right. Uh, history. 12. 17. I will roll one as well. May I? Absolutely. No. no I will take. Nine. Great. Seven. I get okay. advantage on history rolls. I, so I said I read about it. That's why I rolled well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Where is it? Dice, why can't be mean I to find me it? Oh, Did you mean wow. to have a... Is that advantage on there? Yes. Coil gets advantage on history rolls, even though really? it's a negative. <laughs> <laughs> um, so pretty much all of you are at least aware of Northcliffe's existence. It's kind of just like a hub of like t technology, uh, Commerce, kind of just like the the, the leading front of, of of new innovation in in the land of Alithia, um, for pretty much just Trilby. What you've read about it is um, the town was built on a piece of floating rock that detached from a major vein of green void crystal. Um, so it is like a floating city in the sky. Um, you also know about, uh, it's, it's important technological discoveries. It found a new type of vein of void crystal in a nearby mine, um, that allowed, um, uh, purple void crystal kind of repels magic. That's what you've, you've learned. Um, what you've read about is blue absorbs it, um, and it can be used to basically carry or do delayed signal transfers so you can technically make... Uh, like electrical devices work in the magical sense, um, which has led to crazy innovation and stuff. Even just like the the ship you came uh, that came in with uh, Adokus and the crew uh, that you saw, that like engine before that was very much probably powered and run by Blue Void Crystal. Mm. That's cool as heck. Mm -hmm. Damn. But other than that, you just know it's it's a it's a sight to see. It's to the south. It's to the south. I'm excited okay. to see it. Um, about this time, um, you notice a figure approaching your group. Um, Adogus is walking over with his his little teacup still in hand. He just goes, "Good evening." Um, are you all still uh, in agreement to take the journey? Yes, we're simply saying goodbyes and getting things ready. Of course, um, do you all need to take care of anything? I can get the ship ready to go as soon as you'd like. I was just about to head over there myself. Are you sure you would like to continue? <laughs> <laughs> this is a point of no return. It would be wise for you to save before you proceed past this point. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Several cutscenes will play in sequence. <laughs> <laughs> Insert this too. <laughs> I don't know. I I don't have anything left here. Uh, you guys? Yeah. I think we could okay. start heading out. I have to go now before I change my mind. All right. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, no. All is well and done. We are ready. All right. Uh, well, I'll... I'll meet you at the, the guard tower. It, ju it should just be the top floor. I don't know if you actually went out there itself, but um, the meeting room we went in just continued going up like two sets of stairs. And he starts right, right. walking that way. Ribe, we are about to begin our next major chapter in our journey and pilgrimage. Gilnek is very proud of all of you. Most of you have grown very, very strong in this journey. Looks at Morenthal. <laughs> <laughs> Dismissively just sort of looks to the side at everyone else. And Gelnick has never been a more proud double leader. I 
Alex Kaldak. I'm actually here, kind here. of surprised to say it, but I'm really happy to be a part of this group. I'm kind of I'm actually kind of excited. I never well, in a that's... million years imagined I'd be leaving Philgrove. And I never thought I'd be leaving it with friends. Oh. 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 Looks over at Morenthal. <laughs> <laughs> Just like has a, a extremely pained trying to smile, but it's like incredibly mm -hmm. fake. It's like, sure. It's just kind of squinting and baring his teeth. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sure. Like he doesn't want to upset him, but also at the same time, it's like he does not really agree. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, sure, buddy. All right, so you guys, you guys making your way there? Yeah. Let us yeah. away. All right. Mm, yeah. You find the familiar guard tower that Bori has been stationed at all this time you've been in town. Um, you ascend the, the multiple staircases that are wrap around the inside of the tower until you finally make your way to the top. And there you can see there's there's a bit of a, a bustle going on where you can see several Crowns Guard members in the... Um, they're, they're not fully outfitted as they were the previous day. Um, they're kind of gathering cargo... Um, and what looks like to be some of their personal belongings off the ship and unloading them. You can see crew members of the ship just preparing to take off, doing uh, uh, any last minute checks before takeoff and stuff like that. Um, Adokus is standing to the side and greets you all as you come up. And he goes, now, um, once we're in Northcliffe, we can begin the arrangements of the contract. Uh, in exchange for the blood samples, we'll hand over the information we have on whichever available target you want to focus on. Um, we'll, we'll have a lot of time to talk on the ship about the big targets that are remaining. Um, or if you want to do something a little more low stakes, you can just head out on your own, gather up any uh, newly, he, he does air quotes, <laughs> discovered weapons, armor shields, whatnot. We'll pay you a, a flat amount for the smaller items that are on the list. And we don't want you just going out robbing people and taking their belongings if it's rightfully theirs. We'll give you a wand that can identify any of the missing artifacts or, you know, like, a, oh, a simple, uh, you know, sword of, of plus one or something. Like, it'll be on a list. Um. Mm-hmm. Every, every now and then, like, someone passes by and he just gives them, like, a nod of, like, acknowledgement or they know who he is and he's just putting on the public face of like, oh, nice to meet you. Um, he says, is there, is there any last minute things? I think it looks like they're about ready to board. We are. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Um, well, uh, first for introductions and he starts walking on the ship. Um, there you can see the elven man who is kind of the polar opposite build of Adokus. He's tall, lanky, he's like a swashbuckler-esque. He's got the Jerry Seinfeld pirate shirt. Um, <laughs> a, 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 long, yeah, a long, messy ponytail uh, bun in like a, in his, like blonde hair, very lanky. Um, he's kind of just leaning on the side of the ship, just watching the crew as you come on and goes, pleasure to meet you. The name is Azru Irvina. Uh, I will be the captain of the ship this evening. Well, for the next several evenings. It's about a four to five day journey, depending on weather, if everything goes according to plan. Um, would you care for a quick tour of the ship? I can introduce you to the crew or anything that you have questions about, about stay, where can I go? Where can I put my stuff? I can answer all that for you. Yes, please. All right. Um, but I guess I'll... Uh, I'll give you a knock by four before we do take off. And Adokus just gives him a nod and starts going down the deck in inside the ship. Um, so, Azra leads you along this airship and just it's for the sake of. <laughs> oh, wait, I, I, I didn't bring you guys. There we go. I believe this. Hey. Ooh. Whoa. Whoa. We, got, Whoa. we got a little. Whoa. We got a little airship. 
that is so cool. <clears throat> Amazing. I love it so Fancy much. dancy. Uh, so the large sky vessel, the ship is called the Viridescent Javelin. Uh, it's about 100 feet in length. Uh, it's well outfitted and defensive airship. It's got retractable sails that are currently not out. A uh, metallic engine, six green massive crystals that slowly rotate in place. Um, you know the green void crystal is something that alters gravity. You can assume that these are probably some kind of stability uh, and all fleet. Uh, also, keeping the ship in the air. Um, you can tell the, the 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 four outer crystals are kind of like on a um, uh, self-leveling kind of like axis. They they kind of adjust to any like small movements so the ship stays perfectly level. Um, you see about eight crew members on the ship. Um, no more crowns guard. It looks like the, the the ones that came with you are departing for Philgrove as well. Um, but other than that, he immediately takes you down the stairs towards the back of the ship, towards this metallic-looking engine. Uh, there you see two figures. Um, a, a short, middle-aged gnome, medium-length black hair, tied up in a bun, curled mustache he's got really nice clothes on like a nice tunic and and and, and undershirt and stuff but it's it's kind of just stained with whatever material is being used to maintain this engine um and a uh female goblin also wearing similar attire but it's it's kind of like untucked uh the sleeves are rolled up also covered in stains um and asra goes here we have a uh, mama tool and Vespi, you can call Marmy uh, just Marm for short. He, they built the uh, the engine you see here. This is what we use in case uh, the winds aren't on our sides, or if we need to make a, a hasty retreat, it'll uh, propel the ship forward. I don't know how it works, but if you want to know, ask them. Um, they both give you a little nod uh, and wave. Uh, Coil, you notice Marm is like intently staring at you. Um, <laughs> As Azru like <laughs> leads you towards the next um, area, which is the center like hole of the ship, you can see there's a uh... shoot. How many rooms? <laughs> I didn't write down how many rooms. Uh, there's six rooms. It looks like they're all accounted for, and then there's like a a large kind of um, living space uh, below deck. Um, several hammocks are on board. Uh, you can see three of them have names kind of attached to them. One of them, there is currently a, a figure sleeping in. It looks like just a um, a half-elf. Um, he just kind of waves up his hand as people approach. Uh, and Azra goes, this will be where you all stay. Uh, sorry we don't have a more accommodating quarters. They're all kind of taken by my crew members and one for a Dogus. Usually we use that for any VIPs for traveling and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, the deckhands will also be staying with you. That one there in the hammock, he's Grayton. Also, hey, Grayton, can you kind of shape up? We're about to set sail. Uh, Priscilla and Gia will also be down here with you. I think they're above deck, though. Um, and then he leads you, uh, towards a, a back room. Opens it up. It is a big, empty space. And he goes, this is our cargo hold. We're not transporting anything right now. We had some stuff that we had to deliver to Philgrove. That's all gone, though. It's just a nice, smooth, empty flight. But if there was something, this is where it would be. And he closes the door behind him. <laughs> um, <laughs> he goes above deck. He kind of points you out to the, the six, like, crossbow ballista that are mounted on the deck. They are all in a swivel. Um, they don't uh, cross the, like, 180 degree like you can't fire over the ship with one of the ballista it's just kind of an outer defense um you can't turn it on the crew yeah you can't turn it on the crew <laughs> um <laughs> by one of them you see uh, a, a large uh full-blooded orc he's kind of wiping down uh one of the ballista just fiddling with all the the like the levers and gears on it and he stands up looks at the grip and he goes this is our dwill uh he's our security master of combat if anything happens uh look to him he'll have answers for you we should not have anything but um flying through the fire reach mountains sometimes can stir up some local you know baddies so uh just be aware i'll let you guys know when we're 
close to anything. Um, uh, other than that, I've got to introduce you to, and he turns around, and right behind him is this elderly uh, green dragonborn figure. She's Her eyes are kind of like uh, totally clouded over. She's got a walking stick that both her hands are resting on, and she just nods to the group as you all turn and notice her. Uh, this is Carva. She's our navigator, also very in tune with the uh, the skies and weather. She's the first one I report to in the morning to make sure we're going to have a f smooth flight. And from what I'm told, we should have a smooth flight. She just nods and goes, clear skies today. Just a few clouds, nothing to worry about. Um, I don't know why I imagine her voice sounding identical to like Siri. Clear skies. I, I thought you were going to be like, to clear about. skies, the top of 27 today. <laughs> the temperature is 84 degrees. Exactly. <laughs> and then he turns uh, back to you and he goes, well, uh, that's my crew. Do you have any questions on this grand tour I just gave? Hmm. Uh, may we get names and the chat again. Absolutely. Yeah, I was like, uh, some of them. scrabbling at my keyboard, but yeah, mm -hmm. uh, names and their role. You got it. Uh, Thank you. Let me just. Bless. I'm just gonna do this live. We got Azru. We got Marm. Uh, I think I'm Marm and Vespi. Oh, there's three. I accidentally hit space or uh, enter. Hardwill is the security master. Uh, you know, what? I should probably do this in advance, like make a little like, hey, copy and paste this for the group. That would be nice. Future, future <laughs> notes. Appreciate. Uh, it in the it's always notes. fun because I'm, I'm trying to write down notes and everyone has question mark spelling after their name. I, same. I'm like, oh, I was close with spelling that one correctly. Oh. Yeah, if you ever want to know spelling, I will tell you on spot, just with this being it, like, here's eight people. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll type them out for you. Um, but like, for example, Adokus. Does any does anyone know how to spell Adokus properly? It's, uh, to it's totally a guess. No, I'm... I wrote it phonetically. <laughs> so I don't yeah, mess it I wrote up it again. phonetically as well. It's A-D-O-K-A-S. Oh. Uh, oh, I did K U S. I did K U S as well. Ah, uh, so close. Yeah, if you if you ever want to know like when I introduce someone, I'll I'll spit it real real quick out for you. Is Priscilla not spelled with an I? It is. I just did mistyped. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's it's Priscilla it normally. Yeah. Okay. He typed it with P R S. Priscilla. She's really Priscilla. Psh. That's the Dragonborn. Yeah. Priscilla. <laughs> No, the Dragonborn's Carva, Barry. Yeah, I know. Yeah, come on, Barry. It come on. sounds like a serpent kind of a name. You see it like that. <sighs> oh, I, do, I do like that. <laughs> um, he goes, well, uh, if there's uh, no questions, um, the rules of the ship are uh, don't go any private chambers. They're private for a reason. Uh, respect my crew. And if there's a fight, maybe try to help out. Uh, all our lives depend on it. Good. Cool. Thanks. And he starts walking towards <laughs> the back of the ship where there's a, a, a nice little captain's mount. And you can see these like metallic levers that are also on the side of this large steering wheel. Um, you're not sure what they control <laughs> if they do anything. <laughs> That's a toy giant just for show. Mm -hmm. I like to imagine they don't do anything like the engineers are just like, yeah, this controls the ship just to keep him out of their way. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I feel like that is a very appropriate thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but Trilby, uh, uh, oh, go ahead. immediately, Trilby immediately makes a beeline for uh, the engineers, Marmon Vespi, and just starts rattling off fifty thousand questions. <laughs> um, while while hey. you're rattling off questions, um, Marm just kind of holds up a finger and he goes, "Just uh." If if you could let us prepare for takeoff, we we got like five days of travel. I'll I'll answer all your questions. Of, I'm sure. Sure, sure. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, good. Got okay. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. Little space, a little space. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going back. A little. Take a few okay. more steps back. Yeah. Right, how about right here? Yep. A little, here? This... a little more back. A little more. More back. Okay. A little more. And by I'm that a... point, you're I'm out a... of the engine room. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Um, but it takes it takes maybe like 10 or so minutes once you've done the tour. Um, you can see the crew starts uh, preparatory work. Um, the sails unfurl. It's like a, a three point system. So like the, the, the two sides, I don't know if you can see like here, here and here. It kind of like unfurls into this like kind of mm. pointed sail. Mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. yeah. And they're all like on these like metal wire rails that it extends out of. Um, the, the the crystals, all the, the four ones kind of rotate in place. You can see them untying the ship from the, the dock. They pull up the, uh, the, the plank that was used to board the ship. Um, and... Hang on, hang on. It's very, this is very crucial. Uh, the ship begins to, to take flight. Ooh. And oh my god, <laughs> oh my god! From my favorite Zelda game to my favorite Zelda Absolute game. Absolute favorite Zelda game. Um, you 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 start to rise up, and it's it's not a uh, like forward momentum that you would expect. It kind of rises up just vertically for a bit before it like is fully clear of the tower. And starts to sail forward and upwards. Um, you all kind of look down at the the, the, the site of Philgrove getting smaller in the distance. Um, Truly, you swear you can see Facetious and your mother out there just kind of waving in the distance. Uh, not really sure if they can see you or not. Truly's waving frantically with both his arms. But G goodbye! <laughs> yelling. <laughs> You can see out on the platform, uh, Bori is there, and he just kind of gives a quick little wave before descending back down the staircase. The green ravens, a few of them are out. They give you a wave as well, and before you know it, um, Filgrove is just a small little valley, uh, small little bit of civilization between a mountain range in the distance. And you soar the skies amazing um after like 10 minutes the the kind of excitement of takeoff kind of dies down and this music stops uh <laughs> <laughs> shit plummets well it's, it's, it's more zelda music but um the crew kind of settles in and relaxes you can see everyone kind of stops doing anything of of maintenance everyone's insured the the, the ship is in good shape um, and things kind of calm down. So you're you're free to go about the ship as you'd like. Adokus has come back up and he is kind of standing in the bow of the ship, just looking out in the horizon. And you guys have like four or five days basically on this ship. Um, obviously, Whoa. you know, events and depending on where we're traveling and weather and stuff permitting will kind of guide you. But for the day, you know, it's clear skies and there seems to be not any threats in the distance. Hmm. And I'm going to drink some Very water. Cool. <laughs> this is really cool. <clears throat> yeah. How's everyone that. looking in terms of this travel? I'm speaking about the party, by the way. How's everyone adjusting yeah. to this air travel? Anyone, anyone get air sick? <laughs> I don't think... I think Trilby's too excited to acknowledge that he doesn't feel well. <laughs> he threw up twice, but from excitement. Yeah. <laughs> wow, it's, it's all man. jumbled up for him. Yeah. I'm gonna... Um, Gelnek is going to go up to the navigator, the, the person at the helm, the dragonborn lady. Mm -hmm. You! Carva. You are navigator Carva, yes? That is why. You have lots of experience with these airships. I, I've, I've been on airships 20, 30 years, so probably. How often do trips like these happen? Like this specific craft or in general? Just say all the airships. Air, airship in general. Gernick not often hear about airships, sometimes see them fly through sky, but curious. Um, this one seems to be a little more high class, only for kind of emergencies, but back in Northcliffe, we get probably get five or six in and out of port a day. Uh, a lot a lot of the commerce outside of Northcliffe is handled by airship just for convenience sake, but um, uh, there's, oh. there's, there's a few throughout Orlon, for sure. 
you say flower crown shipment is special case. And again, like just like kind of smiling and like pumping his chest up, hands on his hips. He's very flattered at that thought. She she gives a, a warm smile. She goes, it's a very special case. Mm -hmm. Is this your first time flying, young one? It is, yes. What about you, uh, uh, tribe? My tribe or me? No, no, the, the referring to the party. Oh. Tribe, has any any of you traveled by air before? This is a Gelnek first time. Very strange phenomenon. Hmm. Do you think Quail would have before, maybe? Um. Let's do... We'll do do like a D20. Like above a, 10. Yeah, like a roll. Above 10, you've, you've traveled on an airship before. All right. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you, you, you probably had passage, whether it just be like a, a passenger craft or cargo or transport or something. Um, nothing on the scale of this ship, though. Mm -hmm. I have a few times, but nothing this big. Oh, what did you do that required such verbose means of travel? Mm -hmm. Was a fighter. Oh, sorry, we say again? Who was a fighter? Oh. Very well, thank you for answering my question, <laughs> Navigator. Of course. If any questions, I'm happy to talk. It's nice to have new faces on deck. Actually, Gernak does have one more question. Okay. How long does it take to become navigator of airship? Well, um, more than your first trip on an airship, for sure. Um, I, uh, before I was ever on an airship, I, I was a little more in tune with, um, nature, elements, the wind and weather. I think that gave me a, a bit of a edge when I first started doing this, and I think that's what kept me around, is my uh, confident predictions. Oh, Flower Lady, perhaps you will be very good navigator in, in some instances. Perhaps. Have we seen the any of the other uh, characters who we didn't bump into on the uh, tour yet, like Priscilla or Gia or... Uh, oh, we saw Graydon, but uh, the other two? Um, you do, you see a, uh, young female, uh, uh human, she's kind of just idly, like, cleaning up some ropes that are, uh, like, covering the deck. Um, next to her is a, um, a, a very wide, uh, short man. Not dwarf, though, um, his, his skin looks like he's, like, really dry, like, kind of, it's got, like, visible cracks in it stuff um and he's kind of helping uh priscilla with the uh, the ropes on the deck and you can see every now and then they kind of like chit chat uh, and the geo the 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 male one starts to like laugh while priscilla is like straight face not reacting at all um you can see them just like towards the front of the ship i think hops and approaches hey there we didn't uh we didn't see uh, you two when we were getting the tour earlier. Uh, I'm Hobson. Uh, what do you two do on the ship? Priscilla like, drops the ropes and like goes into like a, a like a salute stance. Was, uh, greetings. Uh, I'm, I'm Priscilla. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just a deckhand on the ship. Is there anything I could do for you? <laughs> and Geo just shoves her and he goes, you can relax. The name's Geo. We, uh, we work on the ship. We've been here a bit. Uh, what can we do for you? Oh, no, I, I'm great. Y'all are. I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I'm just. Uh, I was just curious. No, it's okay. We were just looking busy. We were taking care of an essential chore. No, no, we were, <laughs> we were just faking it. These ropes are not gonna do anyone harm. <laughs> <laughs> you can see she's just like flustered and mad at, at Gio. <laughs> um, but he's he's kind of just loose and joking with you. Cute. Is Gio's first name Habadop? As ha in Habadop Geo. Habadop Geo. 
No, sadly, I didn't think of that. I, you know, that would have been great, though. <laughs> My friends call me Habadab. <laughs> there it is. There it is. My last name's Potaboss. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but they, they kind of, just just for like casual conversation, they kind of just joke about um, their their experiences on the ship, uh, a few of their like um, uh, chores and stuff then that they need to maintain and take care of. But um, unless you want to ask them something specifically, they just kind of like pass the time with you for a bit. Yeah. Yeah, no, I didn't have any specific questions, but yeah, I just wanted to meet them. I like this crew. Mm -hmm. Very cute. Speaking of specific questions, Trilby once again <laughs> tries entering the engineer's room, <laughs> pen and paper in hand, uh, <laughs> and um, he, he's he's he slides in with his like legs straight, not moving, just <laughs> just slides right in there. Uh, you can see when you when you go back there, uh, Vespi is like in between like some pipes that are like probably not supposed to be climbed in um but you can see she has like this small like almost like a metallic pencil and she's kind of like lining an edge of it and there's sparks flying it as she moves it across this pipe and marm's just kind of watching and he, every now and then he's like pointing and he looks over his shoulder and she goes well uh you got me uh what do you want to know we're literally trapped in this guy i'm not gonna avoid this <laughs> let's get it over with rip the band-aid uh, off so I noticed that the ship is powered by Green Void Crystal, and I have a bird. He's named Scrubbins. He's also powered by Green Void Crystal, and so that, that he just kind of goes off, uh, just <laughs> mostly just talking about Crystal, not really asking a question. And then um, at the end, he goes, uh, uh, "What? What? So what? What do you do with the um, the the, the byproducts?" And he just kind of looks around the room. So as you're as you're explaining all this to him, do you have Scrubbins out, by the way? Yeah. Um, he probably he, he keeps pointing at him. Sorry, I'm like he's, burpy he's all green. of a sudden. Um, <laughs> he he probably like gives Scrubbins a, a good amount of attention. Um, and he goes, "You and you made this yourself." Mm-hmm. This, this is good work, high quality uh, materials, and you got a little bit of the ve the green void crystal. It's the same stuff, just you know, way smaller scale. Yeah, yeah. So with the green, um, again, what what do you? What do you do with the byproducts of the the green void crystal? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the, you, I, I, I assumed you know by using it, the void crystal doesn't give off any byproducts unless it goes into an inert state. Then it's useless to begin with, and it would just be replaced. It's not. It's not supposed to give off a byproduct. Is is yours? Uh, uh. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. You see, it, I, um. The rest, the rest of the crew doesn't know about this, but um, after a busy day, Scrubbins needs needs to use the restroom. <laughs> you, you're you're sure that has nothing to do with the like artillery built inside that has gunpowder and everything like that. No, nothing to do with that, right? The it's the, it's the... just it's just kind of like a green bird poo. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly I don't know what to say. That's impressive. Well, it's not he's not supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like just, you I've found your, yourself a job. Go. I don't, I don't know what to do with it. I thought you might know. Uh, no, uh, green void crystal should not give off a, a byproduct. Because when when he was just a blue void crystal, he never did that. It's only since since the green. Okay, all right. I'll... Yeah, you might want to look at your, uh, your your your. There is a lot your drafts in there again, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, something mm -hmm. maybe maybe got crossed. Yeah, there's some something's just maybe the harmonic frequency of the of the green. Is, yeah, definitely you know. that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, knowing about this, do you have the uh, the Sarah model above stairs? Is that yours? What? The uh, the uh, automaton. Are they oh, attuned Coyle? with you? Yes. Oh, uh, is, that, is that their name? Yeah, Coil, he's he's great. You should ask him for uppies later. <laughs> uppies. Mm-hmm. 
so are are you attuned to him or not? I, I uh no. Well, he might be attuned to Faley. I don't really know. He's just he's just he's just coil. What do you mean? Okay. You can see he's like full on not really paying attention to you at the moment and like lost in his thoughts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to I'll have to ask them about that later. Yeah. Was was there anything you wanted to know about the engine? Yeah, I, uh Well I mostly wanted to know if there was bird poop coming out of the ship. No, but... there's not bird poop coming out of the ship. <laughs> but um and I think he just resumes just asking. Okay. Not yeah. so much asking as just talking about things he knows. Not trying to show off. He just doesn't know where to start. He's yeah. so excited. I think he kind of gets it. Um, and he humors you for a little. Every now and then he's interrupted when like Vespi speaks up or like you hear a noise and he just goes, hey, hang on. And you he runs over and like adjusts something real quick. Um, while you're standing there, you can see these faint lines of like... Um, it almost looks like a uh, like holographic circuitry every now and then. You kind of get a shimmer of it, like these blue lines, kind of in angular designs on the engine itself. Um, they're not like actually visible, but every now and then like the light catches it just right and you can see them. Um, and when you pay attention to now that you've seen that, you can see the lines that Vespi is drawing are following those those paths as well. That's cool. Yeah. Mm. I don't have any questions, but that's cool, he <laughs> says, pointing at it. Oh, you like it? It's honestly still blows me away. I've I've only been working on this ship for I don't know, ten years and ten years. How old is the ship? Probably close to 10, 12 years. It's it was pretty new when I came aboard. But stay the line. Uh, it's, it's, if you've been to Northcliffe, it's not that impressive, but it still blows me away. I, I was, I was from the North, so this kind of stuff is still new to me, but very impressive. I think the, the longest anything I've made it survived without exploding is two years. That's pretty good. But ten years without exploding, has it like almost exploded? Oh, it's, you know where, I mean, where it's, it gets, it starts to like vibrate, you know? Uh, the engine, I, maybe, maybe like test models before it was put on the ship. Um, but the ship's definitely seen its wear and tear of combat over the years. Nothing like, no wars or anything like that, but we mm -hmm. get the, like, we've gotten occasional pirates and stuff like that. Wow. It's just like my books, the picture books. <laughs> well, um, I'm, I'm happy to talk about picture books all day, uh, but if you don't mind, I'd, I'd really like to get back to fine-tuning this yeah, bad boy sure, so we yeah, don't explode, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, mm-hmm, okay, you, you got it. He says not moving. All right, <laughs> and he just kind of turns around and, like, he's totally aware you're there, but he's not, he's not telling you to leave or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I think Trilby just stands there for a while taking notes, writing things down. Has Trilby been burying Scrubbins' as equivalent of nuclear waste in our wake for the entire that. campaign? You're okay. not supposed to know that. <laughs> Radioactive poop. It's, it's everywhere we've camped Scrubbin. for the night. There's just a small green glowing like lump in the ground <laughs> now. <laughs> I do have on my notes for the session, Scrubbin poops is, is very important. Confirmed. Confirmed. Oh, it's can. very important. Nuclear poopy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, if you guys don't have anything you'd like to do directly, or if you want to talk to each other, um, the day kind of will continue on as planned. Um, there's not a lot to see as we can take a quick little uh, glimpse over here. We're about like. Okay. Yay, by the end of the day. Yay. Mm. Let me actually get this on no. screen. 
We're traveling. We're, we're traveling. So you're uh, th this yeah. this big mountain range here is called the Far Reach Mountains. It's what you've been surrounded by the entire time. Um, you're not really close. There's there's not any like high major peaks in the area. Um, but it's it's every now and then you can glance down and see maybe like a a, a dot of like a, a small like farmland or, or something like that like. Some scattered areas of, of civilization that aren't anything to the degree of Philgrove or other cities you've seen. Just small little, like, communities. Mm -hmm. And if my guess is correct, when we uh, fly over Blackthane, I expect the terrain to be completely white. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, if naming conventions in this continent are uh, yeah. what, I, what we have come to know. Yeah, yeah, the... the <laughs> Totally snow covered everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. Black yeah. was the and name then, of the, the explorer who found them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, he just found it at night <laughs> ah. and thought everything was black. Ah, I see, I see. That's why there's a huge stretch of the continent where everything's black. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Named black. black also, it's a valley. <laughs> it's also a valley. <laughs> yeah. It's not not actual mountain there. It's a really big hole. Trick of the light. I think otherwise, Coil might just be like making the rounds with um, everyone in the group and making sure they're not getting motion sick. Since he has been on a ship before, I imagine he, he knows this is a thing. Hmm. What I imagine like, like Coil just has built in stabilizers. So if the ship's rocking <laughs> side to side, Coil's just perfectly upright at all times. <laughs> yeah, got a built in gyroscope. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, also, I, I hate to do this. I need to use the bathroom really bad real quick. Uh, oh, so yes. I'm, I'm not going to put a BRB screen up. I'll just leave it uh, if you guys want to talk amongst yourselves or or role play something out. I'll be right back. Okay. Actually, I do have something. Hmm. Oh. It's time for tribe meeting. Oh. Tribe? Roll for initiative. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Dan's mic. Oh, no, Dan. Oh. No, ah. we can't role play because Dan's mic. Stuff. Now we are oh, all no. the DM. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, there we go. He muted. he muted himself. That oh, okay. We We're not <laughs> Dan anymore. <laughs> Double oh, yeah. leader tribe, calls tribe for meeting. tribe meeting. We need we need like a flower crown pun. <laughs> the name of our meetings. Mm. Let us Time plant the seeds of progress. Hit. There you there you go. <laughs> 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 Let us bunch it. up in the bouquet of a meeting. Yes, yeah. yes, there we go. Plant your feet. It's time for a meeting. Oh my god. While everyone gathers and uh, making sure that we're out of earshot of everybody else. Gownick believes, since we have more time, perhaps another secret exercise. I don't now, like secrets, double leader. That is okay. That is precisely why we are about to share them. But oh. only as big a secret as you are comfortable with. I, I thought you were making us keep a secret. I understand now. Now, what you do with secret is your own choice. But we are all one tribe. So, Gionek trusts all of you. It's good trust exercise. And, Flower Lady, Stinky Drow, you are not part of previous exercise. Mm. So, you may be new to all of this, but it is it's okay. You will catch on soon enough. So, Gelnick will start. Gelnick's next secret he wishes to share is this drum. Gelnick used to be bad at it. No. Yes. No. Yes. Hard to believe. Gelnick. Gelnick knows. It is it's not possible to leave. It, it's not. Nothing Gelnick wished to share all the time. But when Gelnick was small, uh, mini goblin, smaller. Gelnick. <laughs> Gelnick chewed on many instruments, broke them, was very bad at them. Did not make very for very good war uh, war chanter. In fact, Gelnick used to be worst war chanter. How did you get better? Uh, Hard to believe. Many, many, many broken instruments. To the point, eventually. When Gelnick finally found an instrument he could not break. Drum with hide of steel, practically. 
one that even Gelnek's strong teeth could not gnaw off. And so Gelnek knew was instrument for him. And though he beats his drum originally not very good, eventually get good over time. Less bleeding ears. <laughs> it oh, really I'm changes the vibe of imagining Gelnek playing a steel drum. <laughs> Just playing little melodies. Yeah. <laughs> nice and relaxing. Yeah. On the beach. <laughs> right. That is Gelnek's secret. One that he often not like to share. Because Gelnek like to pretend he great straight from womb. But not true. How long have you been playing? Hmm. Let's see, in Goblin years, I'm going to carry to uh, about 10 years now. It's impressive. Thank you. And now, Gelnek will toss bouquet to whoever will catch and share next secret. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> have the talking bouquet. <laughs> Metaphorically, of course. Hmm. Who's next? Secret may be as big or small as you wish are comfortable with. Well, if, I'm perfectly, if I'm perfectly honest, I thought... I kind of thought that we... Like, I and maybe all of us were all gonna be dead within, like, three days of the time about around the day we met. So uh, this has been a pleasant surprise. How pessimistic yet s somehow realistic of your thought. Well, and like, and it, I mean, I, I came out sounding more critical than I bet. I, I just, uh, I, I, like, when when we all first met, I had no idea what I was doing. I still don't, really. But I just kind of figured that I was, like, Ed, just kind of waiting for that to catch up with me. And, uh, I don't know. Like, it, I'm kind of amazed at, like, how alive we all are right now, still. I'm really excited about it. I'm glad I wasn't the only one. <laughs> I thought we were going to die for sure. Still good. Ah, not on Gelnek watch. For double leader mean double protection. Hmm. But Gelnek glad that you share, small man. If anything, Gelnek believe, little bit of fear. Very useful. Can help you prepare for worst. Well, who, who's who's next? <laughs> also, I am back. I'm I'm just listening. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome Lovely. back. Thank you for catching your mic. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I wanted to listen. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um. I can go next. Um, I actually get quite a bit of joint pain. What? Joint pain. You know, the knees. But you are so strong. That is surprising. Um, but the metal is old. You know. Do you require oil? Pain. We must go shopping. Find you some good lubricant. Hmm. Maybe. I've tried things here and there. Hmm. Gilnak not truly understand aging process of Warforged. If there's anything we can do to help, Coil, you just let us know. It's not too big a deal. It just surprises people, so I thought. Very well, but first sign of rust coming into complicate movement. We will carry you like you carry us on your strong back. Uh, it's not that bad. Very well. Well, thank you for letting us know. Hmm. Who else wills, wishes to grow flower of secrets that we gather and make into Beautiful bouquet. Gelnek running out of metaphors.
At this point, Trilby is visibly sweating. <laughs> Who's strangely dressed boy? I Who's see you are visibly sweating. What? what? Oh, my... dabs at his forehead. I, I must be altitude sickness. Who's next? If you do not wish to share, you... you do not have to. But share what? <laughs> Sorry, that was loud. <laughs> that is okay if you are not ready. What are you but, so nervous about? Uh, but, 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 when, well, I, uh, um. Scrubbin's poops. What? Scrubbin's poops have been burying it behind us all this time. Not all this time. Ever since I upgraded them to be green. Scrubbin's is a mach. What? What do you mean, poops? I thought it was just. A byproduct of the green void crystal, but apparently not. I don't know what I did. But at the end of every day that I use him, he has a little, little, little bit of extra that he doesn't need anymore. And so I've been burying it. I didn't want to tell anybody, but I thought it wasn't a big deal, but maybe it is. Uh -huh. huh. And now we're on a ship, but I have nowhere to bury his poop. I mean, you could throw it over. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that. No. Hey, Dan, while they're like discussing, you know, mm -hmm. poop. Yeah. Um, is there a table nearby that isn't being occupied? Um, there is a kind of like navigation room directly below uh, where the like the captain is that kind of has like maps and charts on it. Or you could go below deck and there's small little like side night tables either like with some cards on them or empty glasses. So you could you could find something nearby. Can uh Faley go down to one of them that has an empty glass and just kinda you know, she brings her bag with her. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Thank you. Faley goes downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that I didn't tell you guys the truth, but now you know. So if you want me to leave and go back to Philgrove, I understand. Why were you hiding this? I just didn't understand it. I thought it was normal. Maybe it is. Well, I was yes. talking to the, the engineers. Who, they work with giant void crystals, so I thought they would know, but they didn't know what I was talking about. Mm, Gelnick presumed it normal. Gelnick assumed everything poops. That's what I thought. But now I'm not does, so sure. Uh, does he's just gonna look at Coil and just to, uh? <laughs> Coil slowly does, starts does shaking Coil? his head. <laughs> just doesn't even finish it. <laughs> just... <laughs> well, I mean, we're like flying to the to the crystal. Capital of the world, it sounds like. I, like, uh, maybe somebody else there might know. Perhaps this is an opportunity to collect them, see what they do. Collect the collect the, the byproducts? Yes, poop can be very useful. Gelnick used to collect poop for fertilizer. Great planting, great farming. I hope this is good fertilizer, because I kept burying it. Um... Doesn't he, like, shoot and stuff? Don't guns usually have, like, a cartridge that they leave back, too? That's his cartridge. You might be right. Maybe. But, it does that explain the green glowingness of it? I mean, it only started when I added the green void crystal, so... I figured it was the Void Crystal, but maybe... And he starts writing down notes. Well, he, thanks he for sit, telling us, buddy. He sits down cross-legged on the deck of the ship, writing notes. Yes, by, by emotions you have spurted out. It seems as though this was something that was very important and eating at you very much. All the more strength required to tell us. Thank you. Can yeah. I still not mm -hmm. understand why it big deal? Everything poop, but... Except Coil. 
<laughs> He's still just kind of staring at Coil. Ah, perhaps just, like, he... Completely just confused now of like the bird poops, but Coil doesn't. <laughs> ah, perhaps, perhaps strong dog simply shy. Gilnick not try to press matter. Coil is just staring directly back, just intense <laughs> eye contact, mm -hmm. uncomfortably intense. <laughs> You know, I didn't. I didn't know uh, today's episode was gonna be have such a primary poop focus. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Also, that uh, while while Trilby's sitting there writing, he like set Scrubbins down, and Scrubbins is just like hopping around on the surface of the, <laughs> the ship, and everyone's just kind of staring at Scrubbins, <laughs> not doing anything out of the ordinary, just just looking. Will mm -hmm. Will he poop t today? Uh, at, at what he. I don't think he only really has his uh, his excessive byproduct if he's if I've used him a lot that day and he hasn't really done anything today so I think I don't think it'll happen. I guess we'll see. Uh, okay. And considering Flower Lady went below deck, Stinky Drow, it is your turn now. I should go see if she's okay. Okay. <laughs> Yana crosses his arms. So evasive. That's right, well. Those two are accruing a lot of secret debt. Mm, they will reveal when they are ready. Yeah. Can I just wish they were ready now? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good try. Um, as as the as the group who's standing on the crew, uh, you're joined by another figure. Um, Adogus kind of walks up behind you and just goes, uh, "What's this I hear about secrets? Are we sharing uh, sharing the deets? Simply <laughs> of those of that concerned tribe. Of Apologies, course. no disrespect meant, but you are not part of tribe. Totally fair. Have a have a wonderful session." <laughs> And he just kind of <laughs> he kind of gives you all just a smile and like walks back insight. to the other side of the ship. Go I'm ahead, insight the heck out of insight him. I'm gonna insight him. Ugh. Fourteen. You can imagine he probably wants to learn more about you guys, but uh, doesn't seem to be bothered that you want to keep stuff secret. Oh, what ends though? <laughs> <laughs> you 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 feel like his approach was genuine. Okay. We're playing hard to get. You can't just like give them the secrets, then they're not interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, our secrets were gr given through being earned from a strong bond of getting nearly killed together. Yeah, can't just it's step in and expect bond. secrets <laughs> without having gone through a horrifying dungeon full of monstrosities and a lot of dead people. <laughs> So what's happening below deck? Alfele is like taking her bag and has her little pouch of like herbs and flowers out and is looking through them. Uh, she also has an empty cup and some water. Gonna walk up behind her and see her doing this. Faley absolutely doesn't notice that he's there. <laughs> She's very focused. What are you doing? Uh, <laughs> hi. Uh, do you know much about flowers? No. All right. Well, there's different ways. Well, sh I mean, you know, you know some, right? I know that flowers exist. <laughs> you can, you know, make potions and, and different things out of them. Well, uh, anyways... There's one that I have that that's good for uh, metal lubrication, and, and I just I, I thought maybe I could make something for Coil, and and maybe it would help him with his joint pain. I I'm just trying to find. I can't remember which one of these it is. Hmm. That's nice of you. I I mean I, anyone would <laughs> would do it. Um. God, who can we even ask? Give me a nature roll, failing. Okay. Nine. You're stumped. 
<laughs> you you know something you have does it, but you're not sure the the correct combination or which flower or what part of the flower to use. Maybe one of the deckhands would know. Maybe. Is there a deckhand like down by us right now? There is still one sleeping uh, nearby you in a hammock. <laughs> Can I go over to them and wake them up? <laughs> Absolutely. I would love to do that. <laughs> Uh, you go over, uh, you can see a little, like, name tag, hand, like, plastered where, like, denoting this is their hammock and uh, a few of their supplies around. Um, the name reads, uh, Grayton Mule. Um, and as you approach, he just, he, like, looks over and goes, what? i really sorry to bother you. Uh, what do you know about flowers? I mean, like, stuff, you know, like they smell good, they grow in like the ground. Potions at all, or? No, no, not really. Faley sighs almost like she's annoyed, even though it is absolutely not his fault, and goes and sits back down. I, if, I, if you want, like, you could probably ask Carva, like, she, she's in tune with nature kind of stuff. Huh. Oh, thank you. Okay, just don't oh. tell anyone I'm here. <laughs> and then he rolls back I over. <laughs> <laughs> Faley looks visibly confused as to why it's a secret, but just shrugs and, and goes off. Where is she at? She was walking uh, above deck. Um, in in the in the room with like the large uh, maps laid out and stuff. She's probably just wistfully looking out into the horizon. I, I, feel, I feel like a lot of the people are. Like, there's not a lot to do now that the ship's been going and mm -hmm. it's on track. Um, so a lot of people are kind of just, like, relaxing. Bailey's gonna mm -hmm. find her. You easily find Carva. She's she's standing just where I said she was. <laughs> uh, hey, Carva? Yes. Uh, can I borrow you for a minute? Absolutely. What can I help with? I've got some flowers downstairs, and I, I was wondering if you might be able to answer a few questions. Well, let's see what you got. And she follows you downstairs. Bailey has, like, all of them laid out on a table, and there's a decent amount of them. I'm trying to make something that's good for, for metal on metal, kind of, like, easing the tension between it. Um, and I know that something I have does that, and well, but I, I just... It's been so long since I've made anything. Like a lubricant or oil kind of thing, yes. Failing nods, yeah. She she picks up like one of the the like large um, what's the what's the like center part of like a, a flower? I guess it varies from flower to flower, right? Yeah. Like, essentially, a uh, she takes like a a sunflower esque equivalent plant um, and mm -hmm. pulls out a few of the seeds from the center. She says, "Take these. You only want the shells. Uh, just." Grind them for a bit. Uh, it should make a, a little bit of oil. I'm not sure how much you want, but you have a, enough here for maybe like a, a small vial's worth. Are there any vials that are empty that I could borrow? Uh, I'm sure I could find something in my quarters. One moment. And she goes to one of the, the private rooms. You hear a, a bit of like glass rummaging and she comes back with like a one and she's like, she blows in it and, like, wipes off some, like, dust. And she goes, hey, something I had. You can keep it. Don't worry. Thank you. Is and that Bailey, all? Like, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. She just kind of, like, back down watches you work for a bit. Does what, exactly what she was told to do. And give me, give me a, um... Should we do a survival roll? Oh, yeah, fifteen. Okay, I just I just wanted to see if you like crit failed it. <laughs> That's basically <laughs> all I was looking for. Here. Oh god! You easily uh, extract a, a small bit of oil from it to to fill the, the small vial that you have. Perfect. Um, is this probably like goes through your? supply of this plant though mm -hmm. so if okay. you wanted to get more you'd have to like restock somewhere okay she puts it in her bag 
You can see Carva like over your shoulder when you finish. She gives a little nod and then just walks up deck wordless. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Survival check DC, don't explode the ship. That is the DC. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh god, what if I had? Uh, what about a oil. very short session? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Um, but yeah, she, she puts it in her bag and just kind of looks at Morenthal. You, uh, I'm guessing you didn't want to share a secret, huh? Nope. <laughs> yeah, me neither. We can just stay down here or, you know. They're probably done by now. I don't know. Who was sharing? To be honest, I can't remember. All I have in my head is Scrubbin's poops. What? <sighs> Scrubbin's poops. He doesn't. He's he doesn't. He doesn't. Uh, I... He's <laughs> he's made him. He doesn't do that. I. Look, I. I. <sighs> the thing that gets me is Scrubbin's poops, but Coil doesn't. Well, Coil's if made of metal, and Scrubbins, Scrubbins does not. Scrubbins does. We don't know that. You just know what Trilby said. <laughs> and Trilby's confused sometimes. You know, you've got a point there. Yeah. I, I Honestly, it's it's probably just the the remnants of the crystal, and I mean, it, it's Trilby. He did say that he spoke to the engineers and they said it, that it doesn't produce any byproduct even when it's used up i don't know i don't know anything about this just i would prefer to think that his mechanical bird um isn't capable sure let's say that yeah, let's let's go with that. Let's, I, let, you know, it's just Trilby being Trilby. Probably, it's fine. Sure. Do you want to go back up and pretend we never heard that about Scrubbins, or? Yeah, let's just All pretend right. the last ten minutes never happened. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. They both go back up. Pretending that nothing just happened at all. Mm -hmm. So I think I know why Scrubbins poops. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you figured it out already? Haley goes to turn around again. <laughs> Explain everything. <laughs> I think adding the green void crystal messed with some of his other functions. That's why. So he's real small, but he's real strong, right? So sure. the void crystals were basically making him stronger, and that was effectively uh, 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 creating a, a, a resonance with some of the, with the two crystals in there that then created the byproduct. Just like a real bird. It's cause, it's cause <laughs> he's, he's, he's making more th than he should be. So it's gotta go somewhere. I guess okay. that makes sense. So I could stop it, but then he'd be weaker. Mm -hmm. So I think he has to keep um, generating byproduct. Sure. Your neck fails to see how this is anything different from pooping. It's bas it's basically pooping. Thought so. <laughs> I don't buy my. <laughs> Does the byproduct have any purpose? I don't know. I've just been burying it. So you don't even know really what it is or what it could do. It's uh, yeah. It it it. It seems to be similar to Void Crystal. Green Void Crystal. I don't know. I can try to save it next time he has to go. But so I haven't you're used telling them today, me, so it'll probably be a bit... You're telling me you've been essentially burying Green Void Crystals this whole time. Very small trace amounts of them, yes. Can I roll a nature check? Absolutely. <laughs> I just, I want to know what that's, what that might do. Yeah, I'm going to do that too. Same. 10. 9. 12. 
You none of you have any. Oh, oh, Trilby knows what he's doing. <laughs> do, do I? <laughs> do I, Dan? No, you don't. <laughs> You you imagine Trilby um, with the, the the small nature of Scrubbin's poops and the magical properties of a void crystal in that small uh, buried under the ground have no impact whatsoever. Thank God. Hold on. Holy I just rolled nature for coil and I get advantage on nature roll. Wow! But I rolled you rolled two a double one. Ones. Oh, Amazing. So he good. really doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> that's that's a, that's a coil head tilt right there. Can someone please that's explain that. plants? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. So I'm I, it's it's such a small <laughs> amount of void crystal that I'm sure it's fine. You've never you've never tested anything like it, but that's kind of your first impression. He's mostly convincing himself yeah. as he's trying to convince the party that it's 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 all good. How many concerned looks are we getting from the crew around now? <laughs> um you 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 got a, a a good wide berth from anyone. Um okay. No one no one seems to really pay mind. You 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 can see a few folks talking in the distance, but everyone's kind of keeping themselves. That's good. That's for the best. Except for one person. <laughs> 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 Thank you for the fair and confused. <laughs> exactly what I was picturing. It's a very good email. Mm -hmm. But outside of poop talk, um, <laughs> does anyone have anything they'd like to do for the day? I want to spend some time tinkering. Okay. How much time do you want to set aside? Uh, how much time do we got between now and dinner? It's... You, it's like noon, so for Trilby, like two hours, <laughs> like like five minutes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe uh, two two checks. Okay, of, of yeah, four, four hours total. Let's do just an intelligence check. Add your add your intelligence modifier and your proficiency, and roll a d twenty. And how do I do those things? So roll a d twenty, and your okay. intelligence, I believe, is probably a plus four. Intelligence is plus four. And I then a 16. your proficiency, I think, is two or three. At the proficiency moment? bonus is three. Okay, so... So that's 23. Okay, so one check was successful. You make you you you, you make the, the chassis of the, the little bee, and you have some good progress on it. We, but... we should explain what I'm trying to do. Oh, yeah. Because it's been like a month and a half. Uh, but that was from the, uh, the, the chameleon air. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any... <laughs> oh, they, thank you, Nicole. Um... <laughs> That's what I was waiting for. Um, he he was selling a little healing robot bee, and Trilby wanted it, but it was too expensive. So he's been inspired to try making one himself. So, with that, I made I made a chassis. Yeah, you made you made kind of just the frame for the bee. It, none of the inner workings or anything, but you made some good progress on it. And then I go again. You go again. Well, crit fail. Okay, you I, maybe I destroyed. You maybe damaged. The, the progress that you did make it's not like i'm not going to count it as a a negative i think but you should i think you, you want should. me to i okay. think it's funnier <laughs> you you start I working the on the intricate and... design and drop it midway through and it shatters <laughs> <laughs> no it's been a busy day <laughs> good well, four hours <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, well, it was it dinner time? <laughs> <clears throat> so I'll say that's about that's about four hours. You you've probably been you talked about poop for like a solid hour, um, at least. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's we'll say it's like getting close to five six at this point. Um, sun's getting low, but you're also high, so it still is you know quite visible out. Um, there's there's probably a a, a small little like kitchen in the uh the like living quarters and they make basically just like a, a a nice like stew a meat stew kind of thing um and they there's there's no like formality to it it's just kind of like come and feed yourself and you see a few of the crew members like filling up their own bowls and either going to a certain area of the ship for some privacy or chatting with another at a table 
might as well do the same, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, let's fill up on food. Get that food. Get that food. You get that food. Easy enough. <laughs> um, yeah. do, you, do you all just sit with each other? Do you want to seek out anyone on the ship? Gelnep will probably take this opportunity to make small talk with the ship, probably bragging about himself and his in the party and all of our exploits. Maybe flowering up some of the language. Hey, get it? Mm -hmm. Oh, very good. But I'm Tish. I think after the uh, I think after the dinner part, Hobson one kind of like uh, wanders kind of back up to the top deck and uh, just kind of off to sort of a uh, corner of it that's not as busy or being occupied by anybody and I actually want to use uh, this I've seen this one before ability uh, just to kind of boost a history check and ask false uh, if false like well, I guess like a couple of questions like false have you ever been on an, on an airship before um give give me a history check all righty 18. And you, you have advantage on this roll, too, so you can roll it again. Just, oh, yeah. Just in case. Still 18. 18. Um, Consistency. In your head, you hear the familiar voice of Vals? Oh, of course. I mean, I mean, like, I was clearly of importance, right? So, of course, I would have been on a ship like this, right? Pro it sounds a lot like you're guessing when you say stuff that oh, way. No, it's, you it's a certain fact. No question in my mind. What color was the ship? It was just brown. Dang. All right. I should have made that harder. <laughs> that one. Uh, you set the bar a little low on that one. I did. I was, yeah, I was on the spot. Have you ever been to Northcliffe before? You know, I feel like I probably have. I it's, It maybe just wasn't that impactful to me. I'm huh. sure I've, I've been all over. Sure. Of course. Hobson's realizing this was not a useful exercise. <laughs> uh, how are you feeling lately, bud? You've not been really like, I don't think you've been waking me up as much lately, so that's great. Appreciate that. Well, yeah, I I, I got to hand it to you. This this seems like a, a big deal. You know, we're with a, a, a ex-member of the Champions of Virtue. We're on an airship going to an important capital city, apparently. It's pretty important, and, huh? I, 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 you know, I feel like you're doing some good work and, until you don't, and then I'll take over again, so keep it up. <laughs> well, okay. De deal. So, <laughs> sounds like a good plan. Try. Yeah. Well, I, I just want to say I appreciate it. Not being, like, woken up and controlled and all that. As much. Of course. I, unless you, you want me to, like... Are you getting too much sleep? You're not getting lazy, are you? No, 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 no. No, I, if no, I could use still a little bit more sleep before before you take over again. But um, thank you, though. It's it's nice being it's nice doing this as a team, not so much as a um, puppet. Puppet, yeah, yeah. yeah that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, like I've, I'm in the same boat. But, well, airboat, literally, at this point. But I'm in the same situation as you now, really. Like, I know I can't really... I haven't come up with a way to get out of this yet. So, like, my goals are, for the time being, your goals. So, if we can... Whatever we can do to uh, achieve them together, like, I want to help. See, it, it, it took you a few months, but you're finally coming around, and I'm so proud of you. <laughs> well, thanks, bud. <laughs> I couldn't have asked for a better person to be stuck with. I mean, no, let's go with that. That sounded nice. Yeah, no, that's like the honesty I appreciate. Same. <laughs> no, that was a lie. I, but you know what? <laughs> I'm warming up to you. Well, well, let let's leave it at we both are appreciative of the other in some capacity. I like that. That's great. It's excellent. Well put. And Hobson goes back down to rejoin the group. <laughs> <laughs> Good talk. And he's immediately possessed. 
<laughs> Anyone up for an adventure? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's it. It does it. the The impression you got from speaking to him, it does seem he like he's uh. You're you're appeasing him for the moment. That's good. I keep on thinking for some reason, and Hobson does as well. I guess I keep on thinking uh, like ah, Vols will be helpful for this, and it's I just haven't gotten through my head yet. Like Vols isn't helpful. <laughs> He's not actually <laughs> useful. <laughs> what if he's just though. really useful and you're just misinterpreting him? Maybe. Maybe that's yeah. like, Maybe that's ooh, there's really cryptic hints. Yeah. Or I'm not asking the right questions. Ooh, mm, I like that. Mm. <laughs> that's the DM <laughs> secret. I gotta catch 22 and false. Why are you so great? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it all started when I was born. <laughs> His entire life story. <laughs> but yeah, that's the thing I was gonna do. So okay. Another another hour or two passes. the The sun finally dips below, and it is a clear night sky. You can see the the stars twinkling, and the ship continues to go forward. Um, at some point towards like the end of the evening, Azru just kind of steps in front of the uh the crew below deck and he goes well i'm retiring um you have kava on on deck if you need anything ask her good night and he retires to his in um it looks like the crew kind of works in shifts on the nights um at this point you see grayton gets up and priscilla and geo uh take their place in their bunks uh once the hours deem worthy um a few others. Uh, you still see uh, Ardwell is busy on deck, just kind of constantly maintaining and futzing with the equipment, even though nothing really needs to be worked on. Um, no sign of Marmy or Vespi as they kind of just keep to the engine deck. Well, I think I think Trilby needs to go try to find Marm again. It's easy enough. He is exactly still in the engineering think. room. Yep. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Trilby needs to explain <laughs> what he thinks is happening with Scrubbin. <laughs> mm -hmm. <sighs> so without being prompted, he just walks in and says, I I I think it's because of and the, the 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 resonance of the two crystals and the tiny chassis and in the excess energy based off of the input velocity. I don't know. He just <laughs> techno babble, fantasy babble. At some point he stops you and he goes, well, do you mind if we open him up? Oh, 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 um, when you say open him up, you mean like his beak? You, you built him, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll temporarily take him apart to fix whatever this issue you're having is. Oh, uh, well, but I, I don't, I don't think, because I think if we fix it, then he'll be less... Powerful. You want the poop. I think I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't want the poop. I, I just think that it's a side <laughs> effect of him being stronger than he should be for the size that he is. I just thought I should let you know because you've never heard of this before. You know, actually, I do appreciate that. Uh, he he kind of like looks at Scrubbins like from a few angles. You know, I, I've I've never heard of a crystal leaving a byproduct like this, but I, I'm sure they could have some use. Maybe, maybe maybe I'll tinker with something. You you want you want me to give you any byproducts? No. If it I, happens during the trip, crystals one thing I I don't need. You can. Okay. Don't All leave right. it on the deck. Like that's no 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 okay. no sir. That's good. Mm hmm. Was this sure. was, is that all you wanted to show me the that, how yeah. the poop worked? Yeah, that that mm, it, byproduct. Yeah. I I mean you. I feel like you were the one who brought it about poop. I. Fair play, sir. It, does the word poop make you uncomfortable? It's it's <laughs> fine. It just. 
It's been a busy day. Okay. I've never been this far from home. Well, you're in good and hands. I broke my B chassis. Your <laughs> B chassis? Yeah. I'm trying to make a healing B. It's hard. Okay. Well, if you if you want help, like I I don't I don't take breaks too long, but usually you around have time dinner, to help me. We're at dinner time. If you want, I can maybe look at something. Oh, that would be such a huge help. Thank you, Marm. Yeah, just uh, come get me tomorrow when uh, we're eating, and I'm, I'll I'm not. See back you tomorrow, here. Marm. Okay. See you then. Yeah. Have a good night. Good night. Good night to your poopy bird too. <laughs> Byproduct bird. Byproduct bird. Scrub and say goodbye. <laughs> He can speak? He just kind of makes noises. Oh, okay. And poops. He's an interesting bird. Thank you. I gotta <laughs> go. I'm sleepy. He returns, and, and as you go to leave, you can see him, like, open a hatch on, like, a, a smaller cylindrical thing that's attached to the engine. And you can see this, um, like, grapefruit-sized, uh sphere that is just like glowing blue um mm. and you can see a, a few of those iridescent lines kind of like come into it um and they, they kind of like channel every they like pulsate energy um and he opens it up and, and kind of futzes with something on the inside before you leave the engine room it's really neat it's cool that's all Trilby can say. He's oh, just, yeah, just sleeping. He's, he's just impressed. Yeah. <laughs> Trilby's gonna go find somewhere to sleep. Yeah. There's there's bunks for all of you. Uh, and if you don't want to sleep in the bunk, you can sleep on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> you will sleep on a bunk if one is available. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. there's there's like a dozen laid out, and there's three accounted for, so there's plenty for the group. Would everyone like to go to sleep? I think so. Yeah. 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 Coyle probably sits around and watches over them, but you know. Okay. Um, sleep takes you all. Surprisingly, a uh, gentle, smooth sailing. Um, the the crystals that self right the ship don't really. Uh give the same feeling of traveling over water that a few of you have experienced where there's the kind of like back and forth rocking. Um, it's it's pretty smooth as, as long as you don't like hit any turbulent weather or anything like that. Um, so you all, you'll get a nice peaceful sleep. Can someone roll just a d20 for me as we start our next day, the day two? Well, let's do it. I'm not rolling. Who wants to roll it? I'll, I'll roll it. I roll horribly, so it shouldn't be me. <laughs> you got them out of the way, Saren. Go, oh, Gam. Helps if I type the right number. Uh, that's... Two! Oh, nice. A Just two! Out of curiosity. Oh, boy. Alright. <sighs> Why All did right. I do it? <laughs> maybe two is Why good. Did you do it? Yeah, maybe, maybe. two is good. You wake up to That's a panic. How... No, just kidding. <laughs> That's how bad the weather will be tomorrow. Two is um, good. You you do wake up and there is a a, a small bit of turbulence. You, you're you're noticing the ship is moving a little bit. It's nothing alarming. Um, but like a, a few things are like slightly jostling as you as you come to um, coil as you've been awake. Maybe like six hours into sleep, you can start hearing the the. The, the soft pitter patter of rain above you, um, and oh. once Azru uh, awakens, um, you can see Carva come downstairs. Uh, whispers, or not, not really whispers, just like closely speaks to him. Um, he goes, um, "If we continue on this course, there's going to be a bit of rough weather, maybe thunderstorms or at least heavy rain." Um, if we do want to go around, it's probably going to add about another half days of travel. And Iris goes, it's fine. <laughs> and Carva <laughs> goes to her room. Um, 
And Azura goes upstairs to the deck. Um, a few crew members slowly start waking up and switch out shifts. Um, you can see Marm is asleep. Uh, Vespi looks like she's probably still back in the engine room. Um, but for the, the next, like, two or three hours, there's, there's a bit of, uh, heavy wind and rainfall. Um, you can see off in the distance, there's, like, a rumblings of a thunderstorm that don't really get too close, but they're leaning to some choppy weather. But you're all awake. What's the temperature like? Is it cold up here? It's it is actually pretty chilly. Even even just the the previous day when it was clear skies, um, it's it's towards like the middle of fall now at this point. Um, and you are going south, so it's not getting colder. Um, but when you're like above cloud coverage and stuff like that, or just high in the air, it's right. when you're standing on the deck for sure. There is a little bit that cuts to the bone. But below deck, it's it's pretty comfy. Um, think like a um, like I don't know, just like an, an, an interior that's not like heated. There's there's no heating element on the ship, right? Um, but it's not it's getting the hard cold. wind or anything cutting through. So yeah. Cool. I'm gonna roll for a bag of holding. Oh, roll away. Here we go. Come on, give me a dupe. Like 81. That. Have I rolled that? I like imagining yes, that Shelby I have. just like rolls Roll a dexterity of saving throw. Oh no. <laughs> I already rolled 81. I'm doing it again? Oh, you're doing it again. Oh, okay, okay. Is that is that is that the rule we're doing? I don't know. Because sure. I re-rolled when I got a dupe yesterday. Let's 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 re-roll if we get a dupe. Okay. Alright. I can't believe how many goddamn Um uh, 27. 27. All right. You pull Not out a, dupe. Um, a small circular device that separates in half. Um, there is like a, a, a soft little like sponge resting on some um, some some like dust and a, and, a, and a little mirror on the top of it. Oh, <laughs> I understand now. <laughs> I was I was like, oh, did what? Huh? OK, yeah, it's like a like a makeup. Yeah. Whatchamacallit. Okay. Compact? <laughs> yes, that's the word. Compact. Is there anything on the sponge, or is it bare? I mean, the part that was touching the powder is, like, the same. But it's, like, a, a, a pale skin tone color. Mm-hmm. Uh, Clashes. It, it, it's it's too pale for you, frankly. It Yeah. yeah. I'm more of a, more of a, a, a spring complexion. Yeah. I think for Trilby. I, I guess Trilby seeks out Faley and is just shrugging and holding out a thing. <sighs> Do you want this? Sure. Enjoy. Thanks. <laughs> I feel like every time I get something for the bag of holding, it's like an obligation. <laughs> it's like it's just like a hindrance to the party it's the bag of many things not useful things <laughs> it's true <laughs> some of them have been useful yeah anyway that's my morning I like to imagine Trilby just like rolling out of bed and like still bleary eyed just shoving his arm into the bag mm-hmm a hundred percent. He just half asleep, reaches his hand in the bag, pulls out some random crap, and just goes, "Yay!" Has to squint at it for a while. Yeah. To comprehend it, even if it's really obvious. Mm-hmm. You notice a landscape of white as you approach Black <laughs> <laughs> Um, about midday during the travel, you do notice um far to I guess your your right um. You can see a, a a small like a spire like mountain, um, and there is like a platform kind of like extending from it, like a 
You know, you know, what's that like a flying machine that like Da Vinci made where it was like the single propeller and it had like the the spiral like fan on it or whatever. Oh, I, I know what you're talking oh, about, but yeah. I don't know what it's called. Yeah, it's I don't know like what it's a, called. It's just like, like a weird helicopter thing. Imagine the the center of that is the spire of the mountain and then there's like a constructed built platform that is the the fan that's wrapping around this spire. Ooh. Um you can see tons of different colored lights uh throughout the district. Um like just kind of shining through fog and the rainfall. Um Ooh. And as you're pointing it out, whoever is on deck, um, Azur kind of gives a point and goes, over there is Blackfane. It's the uh, merchant heaven quarters of the, the, the world, whatever you want to call it. If, if you want something, you can find it there. Uh, there it's going to be pricey, though. It's, it's a little bit of a little bit of snobby, folks, if you're asking me. Um, also, the emperor, that's where they're housed. Uh, I don't think you can see them or anything, but that's it's a it's a neutral ground for a lot of uh, people throughout Alithia. It, it, it welcomes anyone. I, I if 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 you're looking for some rare stuff, it's a great place to go. Don't really recommend it if you're just sightseeing, though. It's a uh, you're gonna you're gonna burn through a hole in your pocket if if you catch my drift. <laughs> I imagine that's even worse for tourists. Oh, absolutely. They 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 know they draw a crowd and they know how to take advantage of a crowd. It's it's like the Shard Coast, but everything they do is legal. Kind of. Wow. By the books, I guess I'll say. Mm -hmm. Also, if you do go there. And maybe some of you are of, uh, you know, the, uh, let's say you have sticky fingers. It's, if, if you get caught there, you're not leaving. It's, uh, the, the penalty there is pretty high. Part of also the reason why the emperor is located there is because of the protection the city has. It's kind of notorious oh for, uh, not letting prisoners leave it's it's not great noted but it is a beautiful place <laughs> he just kind of goes back to the steering <laughs> hey has anyone ever fallen off of this thing you want to try <laughs> no have they though uh fallen off Maybe been taken. Yeah, that's how. That's for sure happened. Oh, what? Well, well. Sometimes, like I, I mentioned, the sky pirates. Sometimes we get some smaller vessels, or they're riding monsters and they they take people. Because the thing is, uh, unless you can fly, they can very easily get rid of you by picking you up and then dropping you off. Like, makes sense. Captain, I'm going to be honest, I was, like, asking this so you could make me feel better. Oh. Well, in terms of people falling off naturally, it's, like, it's only happened when, you know, say, like, uh, know, there's, like, a, a very severe storm or a tornado or something like that, and I was like, I could make it. <laughs> <laughs> I see. But to be it fair, I warned them to hold the on storm, to something. <laughs> the eyes the storm that we are, I assume, still approaching. <laughs> you, we, we've kind of, you've kind of been through it through most of the day. Like, oh, okay. there's a few lightning flashes, but it, it's kind of at a safe distance. It's just kind of raining and cloudy and not the most pleasant of days out. But other than other than like some minor turbulence, you're not really experiencing anything today. Okay. All the same, I think Hobson waits for like a beat pause in the conversation and then says like i'm gonna see if anybody needs me below deck okay oh, okay yeah. bye you know below deck it's hard to fall off if you stay below deck so another point oh, in yeah. the column for me because they could have done that <laughs> that's a good point <laughs> <laughs> he's just like i imagine he's just he's steering slightly and he just like you know the kind of like loose body language of like Jack Sparrow kind of thing? Mm -hmm. He's kind of got that just going as he's just eyeing you down. 
<laughs> just like half leaning on the wheel. Yeah. I'm really enjoying how he just sort of like continues a conversation, whether someone's still there or not, or still listening, or whether like half my NPCs. <laughs> <laughs> I like this captain. Um, I, I I think I think Trilby like uh, is over here in the conversation approaches. Um, uh, captain, he's put he's trying to put on a, a more mature air. Um, I, I I read a novel once about an airship that traveled up to the stars. Is this ship capable of such altitudes? Uh, I mean, we could we could probably you know punch it with the engine back there, but I think that runs into a few other problems like this. Like I've I've never been up there, but from mm -hmm. what I've been told is you kind of like just die. Unless Re like it's like really? really protected. Oh, that's that that isn't what happened yeah. in my novel. They had a grand adventure. Hmm. Well, maybe they were like super protectors. So you could, I'm I'm no scientist, but people in Northcliffe might have a better idea if you really wanted to go in the stars. But <laughs> we could go pretty high. The higher we go, though, like it hurts uh, to breathe. That that kind of happens. It, it's not not hurts. More like you just run out of air. Really? Yeah. We we've done it a few times oh. to kind of skirt around spicy situations, but uh, it's not great. Don't recommend. Oh. Yeah. That's Did that not... happen in your book? No, they, they 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 had a grand adventure. Hmm. Maybe there's a reason why I was in that section of the library. Thank you, Captain. What was, what was the name of your book? Thank thank you, Captain. I, I'm... It was but... called Bilfy Flibbins and the Grand Stars Adventure. Bilfy Flippins, you know, I used to read something similar like that when I was young. I'm realizing now it might not have been based on a true story, Captain. Yeah, I I don't think it is. But there were elements of it that were true, like, you know, um... Yeah, you know, a lot of it was fake, yeah. <laughs> you know, like... Anyway. I'm gonna go... I'm gonna go below decks now, Captain. Yeah. They used oars in their, their row ship. Like, they didn't even have sails. They just, they rowed. I was going to ask about that next. No. The, like, the, 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 the four platforms we have here in the front, those are literally just for docking, so I don't, you know, overcorrect. Can you imagine going to the sky by oars? It, 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 it does sound silly now that, now that you mention it. Also, it left behind dust, like sparkles. Like, yes. it's not very inconvenient. Like, 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 it's not subtle. It would be very easy to track. I was gonna ask about that, too. No. I mean, if the engine explodes, we could leave behind stuff. But it'd be, like, fire and smoke. It's not very magical. No. Can I answer think... any other questions for you? No, that's all, Captain. Thank you, Captain. Have, have a wonderful, safe flight. Thank you. And Trilby, uh, who, who has, is still not used to, he still has got the air sickness, just like clutches whatever wall and railing there is as he like moves. You know, you know, like if you're on like an ice rink, and you don't want to skate and you're just kind of like, oh, yeah, holding out of the wall. <laughs> that, that's how he's moving around the ship. Oh, I love it. Even if it's like steady and not moving. I think goes, if you do that close enough to him, he goes, you better hold on tight. We're getting some high winds coming up. There's there's no change in the wind, but he just says that to you. Trilby <laughs> holds the wall tighter. Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> and below deck. Still. And below deck. Everyone's just saying below deck. Why? What? What's what's below deck? <laughs> it's chilly and wet on top. It's true. Ah, welcome, fellow coward. <laughs> <laughs> um... Coil, at some point in the day, um, do you, are, are you by yourself at any point or? Um, probably like, at some point. I feel like he probably did hang out um, up with Captain for a while because he, I think he thinks he's funny. Um, 
<laughs> and also, he's not really too worried about falling overboard. <laughs> um, I'd like to think if Coil fell off, Coil would just like dust himself off and start walking again, just like Master Chief. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Master Chief when he falls from space. Yeah. 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 Just walks it off. I need a weapon. Halo 3. <laughs> Returning their bomb, whatever that line. Is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Returning their bomb. God. Um, at at some point, Coil, um, you were approached by a small gnomish figure, and you would recognize this as Marm. Um. Uh, yes. He says, "Could I have a moment of your time?" Um. Sure. Uh, so I talked to the the smart little boy, and he said, "Your name's Coil." He's correct. I've been observing from a distance and noticed um, it doesn't seem. Do do you are you attuned with anyone? Do you have a master? Mm -hmm. So, so like, if I asked you if you feel feelings, what would you say to that? Well, I would advise against answering questions like that. You would advise but against? See, the thing that I'm curious about is I've I've met uh, similar uh, models such as you. Um, none of them have been, uh, let's say, as free-spirited as you. You've met others. Yeah. You're a, a nobility Sarah model. It's rare, but I fancy myself a little bit of a expert in the area. Maybe, maybe not expert, but just hobbyist, I guess. Well, I don't know much about my creation. Do you know? So you probably know more than me. So you don't you don't remember like your gaining sentience or or where you were created anything like that? I also I don't I don't mean to be rude. I'm just kind of fascinated. Oh, if you know something. Might be helpful to me. Well, uh, have you ever heard of the uh, Vodia? It's the. Uh, you can give me a history with advantage on this. Okay, that was my Wiki. V o e d i a. V o d d i a. History, 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 history. A ten with advantage. <laughs> Even with uh, oh. just a ten. You're familiar with, like, the word. Um, mm -hmm. Probably your knowledge stems from, like, it was an ancient civilization. That's kind of like the end of your knowledge, but it's it's something familiar. It goes, mm -hmm. um, if you've ever been to, like, Shard Coast, uh, a lot of the city was built on, like, ruins by them. They were, like, ancient, ancient people. Like, I'm talking, you know, most of Orlan probably didn't even exist as it is today. Like, they they up and vanished, uh, supposedly. There's not a lot of records left behind, but um, a few things, especially like uh, outside of Ricefall, there's that sunken city of Sarah, um, which I think is probably where you came from. Um, a lot of people who go dungeon diving in there are usually looking for artifacts from the Vodia. Uh, and... Usually they sell for a pretty penny. A few collectors 
uh, I've seen have similar models such as you, though they are uh, more of uh, uh, servants, like not, they, they don't have their own thoughts. Um, or they're collecting dust in museums, but they kind of had that similar, like, jackal-esque design. Um, you, 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 there's a, li a little more care in your, uh, your hands, I'm noticing. Like, I've seen oh. models where they were, they, they didn't necessarily have hands or fingers, it was like, purely bladed and shielded arms. Um. I see you. Oh. Yeah, I mean, you seem to be one of a kind. Like, I've I've met other uh, you know constructs, warforged with their own minds, but usually it's like uh, <laughs> a mage with too much time on their hands. I guess is usually the result of it. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, uh, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very surprised and very, you know, uh, grateful to have met you. Sorry again, if any of this is rude, I don't, I, I've never really interacted a lot with No, you're, uh, well, it's been enlightening, actually. My what brother actually has a... Uh, your name was? Oh, sorry, what was that? What did you say your name was? Oh, uh, my name is Marm. Uh, Marmatool for, like, full, full names. Um, but you can just call me Marm. Uh, oh, I, I also Marm. have a brother, uh, Estevan. He lives in Northcliffe. I, I don't know if... Since you guys are going there, if you want, you can maybe speak with him. He actually has a, a little construct of his own. He's just a simple little guy, though. It kind of just, like, carries stuff for him. Um, but he might he might maybe know a little more on the subject. Uh, he's he, That's kind of his thing. That's the one, you said? Yes. You know, probably look him up. Esteban Longfeather. I should probably say our full name, but... Uh, if anything, though... Sorry, um, I'm writing this down really quick. <laughs> no, you're totally good. If anything, I would... Granted, you're... You were originally were, I think, a protection model built for nobility. Like, that's where most of the models like you have been found from. Um, to my knowledge. And, yeah. uh... They go for a, uh, a pretty copper piece, if you catch my drift. So, granted, you look like you're more than capable of taking care of yourself, but, like, cities like, like, Blackfane and stuff, I would, uh, if you do visit, maybe make sure your friends are with you. Stones explain some things. Yeah, I... It, like, granted, like I said, you could probably take care of yourself, but, um, collectors, I mean, you, you know how terrible people, people could be, right? Like, I think they would go through any lengths if they see something that rare walk by. Thank you for the warning. Every, every now and then, like, while you're talking to him, he just kind of, like, like, hands on his hips, looks back at you, like, he's just kind of astonished and, like, taking in the details of your, your, your body and stuff. Um, one, trying not to be rude, but also fascinated. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I hope, uh, the, the flight is kind to you, and, and if, if you do remember anything or would like to you know discuss I, i'm happy to share anything i i know um yeah if i think of anything i might ask you absolutely and and hey if anything um like outside of Northcliffe, uh, if you ever do go 
to Ricefall. Um, the sunken runes there are like a, 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 a lamp to moths, like for adventurers. So like easy enough to find. You could probably get pretty deep before it's like a issue. There's a lot of beasts kind of took over the capital and stuff like that, that when it sank. So it's dangerous. I'm sure you could handle yourself, but if, you, if you're looking for information, that could be a good spot. I don't know if you want information, but throwing it out there. It's enough. Thank you. Of course. He, 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 you know, like, he continues to look until he catches himself and he goes, well, I'll be in the engine if you need anything. He slowly walks away. <laughs> Coil does a little nod and it's like, hmm, lots to think about. <laughs> he probably goes back, wanders back to check on everybody else. What's the rest of the crew up to? Yeah. Also, you know what we should do? Because I realize it's, it's two and a half hours. Do we want to take a quick little BRB for bathroom or like drinks to. and stuff like that? Oh, yeah, we can yeah. take one. Quick yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll do that. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll be back and you want to say like uh, 36, 37? Sure. Yeah. Like 8, 37? Yeah. yeah. That's good. 34 minutes? Yeah. All right. I'll see y'all in a few. See you. Hey, chat. <laughs> How you doing? I'm gonna go to the bathroom in a second. Just want to say hi. Can't get over the poop arc. You know, you could not have told me and made me believe we would spend like a good 30 minutes discussing poop. Enthusiast, thank you. Yeah, my point, my brain totally is blank today. I'm, I'm having so much trouble speaking, I apologize. <laughs> I write so many notes and then I'm like, head empty. Poop is important. I'm going to, uh, the request, Saren's volume is maxed out, unfortunately, so. I, I, I tried balancing stuff before stream. Uh, I will be right back, though.
About <laughs> it. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are y'all? How we doing? Pretty good. Pretty doing good. good. Doing good. Doing great. Good. Um, are we? Are, I think. I think everyone's back. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Sound off if you know it. Well, <laughs> no one said it anything, so I guess we're here. <laughs> um. So, uh, the, your second day, uh, outside of some rainfall and some unpleasant weather, uh, goes pretty smooth. Um, if there's anything anyone wants to do, we can do that, or we can just cut to the next day and continue travel. And I give an another two attempts at working on this. Absolutely. This I'm just going to roll two d20s. Uh, a 14, which then plus the four and the three is 21. Mm -hmm. And then a four. So then the, the uh, 11. 11. Okay, so not not a success, but not a failure. So we got we got one success on the board. Woo! Rebuilt that chassis. Yeah, you rebuilt it, and this time it's like you actually screwed it together. You forgot to do that the first time. Mm -hmm. I, I, I <laughs> forgot screws, and I added a component that makes it explode. Yeah. It has a lot of contact. You were like, around. oh, the explosion. I should leave that out. Yeah. <laughs> um, but your your evening comes to a close, unless anyone has anything, and we can, we can cut to the next day. If someone else wants to roll a d20 I'll do I'm it. not doing it this All time right. I'll do Nicole's it Nicole's guy I rolled a 15 nice I don't know if it's good let's say it's good okay um you you wake up the the air within the cabin is just a, a little bit chillier um above deck the the Cloud coverage is thick. There is like a gray overcast out, and there's just the slightest bit of snowfall. Like it, it pretty much melts as it hits the deck. Um, but there's like a few pockets of like metal that it kind of like builds up on on the deck. Um, just a just a very light snowfall. Other than that, though, it it seems like pretty smooth weather for most of the day. Um. Also, I'm sorry, but Dan, can you spell that civilization name again for me? It was like V. Oh, Estevan. Oh, I know. <laughs> Estevan was the civilization. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Estevan v the civilization. V O E D I A. Thank you. And the city was Sarah, C E R A. Awesome. I was like, I actually I took note, and then I. Just read the first thing that my eyes looked at <laughs> instead of finding exactly where it was. The civilization, uh, Morenthal. Mm -hmm. That's what I oh, wrote yeah. down. <laughs> um, you get some um, like other other than the snowfall, you can see a lot of uh, mountain peaks, kind of like coming into range, and the height you're actually flying at, like they're almost like approaching close to the ship where the the captain is actually like moving between. Uh, between peaks. Um, and at one point, you see... Um, uh, I lost my notes. You see uh, Ardwill go up to the uh, the, the cabins, the, the captain's area, and he kind of whispers a few words. Um, and Azru just over the deck, whoever is on, above quarters right now, he goes, uh, everyone uh, just kind of keep your eyes peeled um or things things could get spicy we're we're a little low altitude uh but we need to maintain this just just make sure nothing's uh, following us um and you can see a, a few people from the deck like the deck hands come out and everyone's kind of just keeping eyes on the surrounding mountain peaks that you're flying in and out of following us do you look behind you Yes. Oh no. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Kelnick is Kelnick is confusion. This airship must be largest thing in sky. 
What predator would be stupid enough to attack? Um, as you say that, just like with one finger pointing, um, Azuru kind of just glances over at one of the mountain ranges and you can see a figure just kind of like detach from the side of the mountain and take to the sky. Um, but it like immediately dips bolt behind the, the mountain peak out of sight. Well, um, the route we're taking, this part of the far reach, uh, it's home to some nasty wyverns. So, uh, sometimes they don't bother us. Sometimes they do just, uh, if anyone wants to man the ballista, that would be a good idea. <laughs> you can see Ardwill, our, um, Ardwill is already on like this front one here. Ooh, wyverns, like drinks, um, but of the sky. Yeah, so they're they're not bad in, you know, small numbers, but, uh, you know, mem remember the thing I told about picking up and dropping off? They can do that, though, if they get a little feisty, so... And that would take great opportunity at hunting such exotic creatures, and well, he happily hops on a ballista. <laughs> all the, all the, the more for you. I mean, as, as you can see, um, uh, folks, folks looking below the ship or just around the ship. Can you give me a perception check? Okay. I don't think Troby's looking outside. 22. Wow. Damn. No, perceptive. 15. That's an eight. And ironically, I had a little bit of difficulty finding perception on my sheet. <laughs> <laughs> the irony. You're in character. Mm -hmm. Method acting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So, uh, Faley, Gelnick, ba basically everyone but Hobson and Trilby. <laughs> <laughs> um, looking below, um, a few a few clouds are kind of like obscuring your coverage. Um the, the air above is, is heavy and thick with clouds. Um, but you can see a few figures kind of darting between, and you notice they are, they're keeping pace with the ship. They're, they're like, probably like a few hundred feet below the ship at the moment. Um, but as soon as kind of uh, the ship rights around one mountain peak, you can see they quickly rise and gain altitude. And you can see there's four of these figures rapidly approaching. Uh, looks like uh, two on each side. You can kind of catch, see them and call them out before they actually arrive. Captain, I'm on, I'm doing the best I can. This this one's up to you all now. Um, and is now is now a bad time for me to check my bag of holding because it is a new day. <laughs> I mean, you can do it. That will be you your initiative if we you know happen to suddenly need to roll initiative. Hey, let's roll initiative. Trilby's just like, <laughs> oh my god! Anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, let's do, let's do roll initiative. Um, I cannot find a, a appropriate music that I want. Do, do some, hey some good old Ooh. Skyrim. That's a critical hit initiative. Wow. Oh. Damn. I like that. You're really taking initiative. Does that do anything? I don't know. You go really quick. I have a I have a homebrew rule as to what it does, but I don't know what Dan. Ooh, do, uh, I I would love to hear. Uh, I typically my, I just it, it puts you higher up in initiative for me. Yeah, that's what I do. I'd like my house rule is if somebody crits, um, crit fail or crit succeed, is highest slash lowest initiative. Um, and then if if they if somebody else crits, then you take the higher number, of course. Ooh. Okay, okay. I Yeah, I, I like that. I feel like that. I was, was going to suggest that anyway, because we got the same number. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, because you crit, you should probably mm -hmm. be ahead. It's a fun little thing, because, like, the fact that initiative can crit, just, like, Wait, give that a purpose. Mm. Did people roll multiple? Why are there so nope, many? Did you remove one? it from last time? Yeah, it was empty. Oh. Oh, no. Roll 20 has a bug with that. We can't see it. You can see that we have two, but we can't. It's just a weird bug that it has on the DM end. Huh. Yeah, you can just Do you want delete. us to tell you what our real numbers are? Well, I I, I have them in the the sheet. That's weird. Yeah. Let me let me clear this real quick. Sorry. Yeah. For those who don't know, on Dan's end, he sees multiple of us in the initiative. Oh no. That's weird. Yeah. Very weird. It's We're only been a recent bug. Yeah. Uh, I think it it has to do with like if you don't clear the initiative before you close it out, it like 
keeps it kind of weirdly. It never did that mm. before. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm they gonna fix it soon. remove it, close it, reopen it, and then could you all re-roll? But you can type and edit your previous. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> hey, look at that. <laughs> I rolled a two, a uh, crit, uh, crit failure. Oh, I, I love change it. it? Oh, just you can click, just click on the numbers. Yeah. yeah. I love that. From crit, crit success to crit fail. <laughs> Is this song really like 30 seconds long? I'm just, I'm very unhappy with music today. Dang. I think it's great. Ooh. No. No. We're fighting a wyvern. You got any Monster Hunter in there? Monster Hunter battle? Sure, let's just do this. I like to imagine this is the captain just like changing playlists while he's at the helm. It's like, nope. No, mm -mm. he's got a, yeah. a magical blue speaker. Yeah, magical blue with runes on it. Yeah, Does kicking this help? the jukebox. <laughs> Initiative over there. Man, my I'm I'm so scatterbrained today. I don't know what my deal is. It's Wednesday, That's my dude. Right. We're all a little it's scatterbrained. Wednesday. It's Wednesday, my dude. Is, is it is it legitimately a bad time to check for the bag of holding? We can yes, do it later. It is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can you can do that in mid combat. That will just be your turn. No, let's not do that. My turn. <laughs> oh, that's a very big skull icon. Mm. Oh. Big boy. Big boy. Oh, they're, they're, they're multiplying. They're a little bit closer than I thought they were. I thought they were hundreds of meters away. They were below you, and they they rapidly rose. Oh, they, they fly oh. now? They rose to the... Really? <laughs> they fly. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I didn't make the Lord of the Rings reference earlier when I could have. About being sure. farthest from home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's because you already did that one. <laughs> yeah, I thought about it, though. All right. And if, if we fly one step further, it doesn't have the same ring to it. <laughs> Where is a... I need a good spot for this initiative. Initiative's going off screen today. Just, you just get the little turn order. There we go. Okay. Uh, so, um, you see these four winged figures. They're like small dragons, but they're, they have this like just uh, pale flesh. Um, they, as their like wings extend and you can see like sunlight uh, piercing through like the, the skin between their wings, it's like a bright red shining through, but the rest of them is just kind of like a uncolored grayish pale. Um, and they they all just kind of swarm up and immediately dart above the ship and then like come back down to uh, to meet you like 30 or feet above the ship. So they're 30 feet up, but all according to where they are on the map. And they look like it's a coordinated attack. Uh, Morenthal, you are first in the initiative. Do you want Gelnek to go first since he critted? That's right. But also, why is it... I changed the number to try and make it easier. Oh, okay. I like that. Thank you. Uh, Gelnek, you are on the, the the ballista. You can freely take a shot. It will just be um, a d20 plus your proficiency roll. Oh, okay. I just uh, you shout out that the wyverns... Uh... Exotic flying drakes, we simply wish to pass. Apologies for coming into your territory, but you are the aggressor here. Yeah. And I'll roll 1d20 plus my proficiency. That is going to be a 14. 14 at this boy. does hit. At which boy was it? Uh, the one north up okay. here. <laughs> that is a hit. Uh, go ahead and roll. Uh, I think it is 3d8 for me. They're a oh little smaller gosh. than a typical ballista, wow. but still they pack a punch. That's 18 damage. 18 damage. Solid. Chunky hit. And with my bonus action, I'm going to call out, You, strangely dressed boy, your bird shall be the superior one in the sky that all shall fear. Okay. And I'm going to give uh, Trilby a bardic inspiration. You have a Ooh. D8 that you can spend on 
uh, ability checks, uh, attack roll, saving throws, damage rolls, or AC. Thank you, double leader. And that'll be my turn. All right. Solid hit. Solid hit. It, it, a big hit in, like, the side of the rib cage, and it kind of, like, pulls in on it for a second and dips a few feet before, like, righting itself uh, and continuing to fly. Morenthal. Uh, okay. <clears throat> I'm going to pull out my short bow then. And... Oh, do I want to do that? <laughs> or do I want to go for one of the fucking ballistas, considering how powerful they are? Um... Shit. Uh, no. Fuck it. We'll go for the short bow. Um... Yeah, I'll just do a normal attack on it. 20... Does 26 hit, Dan? 26 does hit. Uh, and, and which okay. one was this on? Sorry. Uh, top left one. Top Sorry, left. I realized you I didn't it. say. Yeah, the one across from Coil. All right. The bow five damage on pierces that one. into the side of it. You see a little gout of blood, and it shrieks. Uh, but seems like it didn't hurt that much. It's, a, it's just a little bow. There's a little arrow. Yeah. Um. Okay, in that case, I'll also then just start moving up to this one. All right. Anything else? No, that's all. Truly. Uh, I'm reading. Um, <laughs> what? It, it just says within range. How do I know what the range of it is? Like how far? For, oh, it says right there. Okay, how far is this? Oh, excellent. Okay. Um, Trilby's gonna cast Shatter on this this guy. Okay. How how do I ping? I don't if you click a... and hold. There it is. Oh, Sh shatter. Um, is that what you need there? Constitution date saving throw. Con saving throw. Thank you. Yes, and that is with my arcane firearm. Well, I guess I'll wait if it. Well, he rolled an at one, so he failed. Sweet. So that is, uh, again, um, Shatter is a, uh, a small uh, symbol that proper porridge the bear holds. Mm -hmm. He smashes the, you know, the symbol. symbol? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm remembering I have a lot of things in my turn. So that with the, with the arcane firearm, that's an additional, I think it's 1d8. Yes, of damage. So that's two. Okay. Great. Good. Um. And then additionally, Scrubbins is gonna is gonna hop over here. Uh, I should have mentioned earlier he's in he's in force ballista mode. I believe it. As you do. Mm -hmm. And um, he is gonna fire upon him with a thing I remembered how to do. Uh, da, 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 da. uh, where is it? Object within 120 feet. What do I roll for the attack? Do you remember? I I have no. What are you, what are you trying to do? I'm trying to hit him with force ballista with scrubbins. Mm -hmm. There should I'm trying be. Trying to remember what uh... I do for the check to try to attack. It's, it's, I'm assuming it's probably a mail, a range spell attack. It yeah, it just range. says range spell attack. Yeah, so that'll it, there should be like on your spell sheet a a plus blank on the top right. Spell attack bonus. Mm -hmm. Spell save DC. Which one? The, the 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 one that's a plus. On the main sheet. Yes. What what uh, where oh, yeah. plus. Plus what? I'm sorry. It's been a minute. Okay, seven. Sorry. That, that, I didn't realize there wasn't a plus there. Okay. Was, so the spell save is like, they need to roll against it. The spell attack bonus is what you get when you are like trying to hit something with a spell. Okay. So what should I roll for Scrubbin's attack? I believe a d20 plus seven. Okay. So 14. 14 hits. Great. 
So he's he's gonna push him away with uh two d eight force damage. Um and he's pushed five feet away. So thirteen damage and pushed five feet away. Ah. <laughs> he's pushed slightly in the that, air. That is my turn. It was a good turn. Thank you. Uh it's their turn. I imagine we all feel more complex feelings about seeing Scrubbins in action now, right? <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. We did Our, the damage for Shatter, didn't we? Yes. Yes. I, I took the 12 and then the 13. Does Shatter have a different two. effect? Um, uh, I think each but it's creature not a on that point must make a con saving throw. Teacher, re, creature takes 3d8 thunder damage, mm -hmm. which I rolled a 12. Um, yeah, that's it. It's a the, sudden the loud ringing noise. Shatter was too. If that sucks what? for him. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like it. They 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 you can see kind of like um like sound waves resonate in the air around this flying wyvern and it uh it it kind of just does that like crunch and shriek drops altitude a bit and then writes itself once it's regained its composure. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, it was it was 12 damage plus 2 bonus damage because of the Arcane firearm of proper porridge. So uh, this one is coming down on the ship. It just lands and like the ship kind of jolts in that direction, then immediately rights itself and stabilizes. Not enough to like throw anyone prone or anything like that. Um, but it is going to take uh, a a bite and a its tail. You notice this like wicked looking uh, like black tipped uh stinger on the end of its tail it kind of whips around and takes two attacks on Faley. oh no uh not good um a 22 to hit and a 14 to hit yeah both hit yeah okay oh, ow. All right, I'm going to need you to make a constitution saving throw. Okay. Uh. 19. Oh, good. Uh, okay, you take 10 damage on the bite. Uh -huh. It just kind of like sinks into your shoulder. Um, the, a huge gout of blood kind of like pull. It pulls back and takes a little with you. Mm -hmm. um, and then as, it's, as you're kind of like recovering from that, the stinger comes in and like hits you right in the side below the ribs. Um, sick. You take six damage from that, and then you made the con save. You take nine poison damage on top of that. Okay. Oh my goodness. Ow. That's good. You feel this, like, pulse of venom in your body, but you fight it off um this one flying comes in uh and it's got these two claws that just kind of like go to grab at you trilby one's at trilby and one's at adokus uh. uh 19 to hit and a miss on adokus a 19 hits uh-huh and a claw. How much? It just says eight damage total. All right. Um, Ow. This boy lands on the deck, and he's going to do uh, a, a, a bite over at Coil, and the tail whips around at Morenthal on the ballista. Damn it. Mmm, not great. I'm rolling good. Uh, a 24 <laughs> uh -oh. on Coil and a 25 on Morenthal. Yeah, that Damn. hits. Those definitely hit. So on Coil, uh, that is nine piercing damage. Um, right. so nine piercing damage on Morenthal, and I need you to make a con saving throw. I was worried you were going to say that. Mm -hmm. 13. 
13? It is not enough. You feel that same I don't, pulse. No. <laughs> and uh and it, it it burns. You can you can feel like it it feels like your blood is boiling from the inside from that wound. Uh so. God, I'm reading through all my. I'm desperately like, is there anything I can use to, to stop this? You take 21 mm -hmm. damage of poison damage from the the piercing poison. Oh! Oh! Can I use uncanny dodge on this? You can. Um, which means what? How much? How much damage was on the the pierce? It was on nine on the pierce. Nine. And then 21 on the poison. <laughs> Okay, so that's that's thirty. That's... So you would take only fifteen. Okay, I'm I'm I mean I'm down with that if you're yeah, down with so that. Yeah. So you you bite your lip and bear down, knowing this like you this this tail is undodgeable, and you kind of just brace for it and shake off some of the damage, but it it hurts. That sounds good to me. Um. And then is that one, and and then this one is going to come over here for our duel. Actually, he'll probably come do that. Yeah. He's going to bite at our duel and tail coming for you, Hobson. Ugh. Uh, nat 20 on our, our duel. And then a <laughs> oh. 17 to hit Hobson. Yeah, that'll hit me too. Okay. It's really disconcerting having you be nervous about how well you're rolling. Yeah. there's there, it's Most numbers have been above 15. Um, <laughs> so I need you to make a con save, Hobson. Okie dokie. Uh, nine. Nine. Nah, it's not great. Uh, just looking at my NPC's health real quick. Oh, uh, yeah, our will <laughs> just took 20 on that crit. Uh, so he's looking rough. <laughs> um Oh no, Dan. <laughs> uh -huh. I rolled well. <laughs> I have rolled your doom. <laughs> um 7 from the pierce. And 24 from the poison. Ow. Yowza. Oof. Oh. It's a... It's How a, you it's doing a, there? It's a bit of a sting. We're, yeah, we're definitely in single digits now. Uh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. All right, but that is their turn. Hey, they're done. Hobson, you're up. <laughs> well... For my first move, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I, Hobson, I think sort of like tries to. He was already kind of thinking of wanting to do it, but tries to like sort of <laughs> get a hand up to the chest to cast armor back at this on himself. Might have been a little more helpful just a split second ago, and uh, starts. Hmm. That really changes what my plan was going to be. Uh. Oh, no, it doesn't. Starts. Uh. I think trying to fall back here towards this group here. And, uh. I think that's my actual turn, but he does shout back at the Arzu. Hey, I feel really silly now not asking this over like over the last whole two days, but um, do you have any advice for like aerial combat? Any tips? Uh, I mean the the ballista are good and, and don't get grabbed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No problem, Captain. Ow. <laughs> um. Captain Ow. Captain Ow. Anything else for Hobson? Uh, no. Though, boy, those 10 pit points are really going to help. Yes. I hope. 
Well, unless you roll like that again, in which case they're going to do nothing. Yeah, it was, it was a, a bit of a spicy roll. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hops and woozy. All right, Coil, you are up. But armored. All right. Coil is going to rage. Um, And pull out the greatsword. Yeah. And smack at this one. Um, uh, he is also going to reckless attack, so he gets advantage, but anything also gets advantage on him. Ugh, 13? 13 just hits. Oh. Amazing. I don't know why it auto-rolled, but, um... That is 16 slashing damage with 2 rage damage. Okay. Alright, yeah, you you take a, a sizable chunk out of this beast, and its blood kind of just spills on the side of the deck. And then I get an extra attack, so I'm going to slap him again. Slap him. 23. Yeah, that definitely hits. All right. And that's nine slashing and two rage. Okay. Hey, he's, this one's taken some beatings. Uh, it, it, it's, it, you're, you're noticing it's trying to, like, take off, and one of its wings, like, you cut through the, the, the skin of it. So there's just kind of like this this open uh, slice in it, and it's it's not able to catch air as well. Good. All right, that's his turn. All right, Faley. Good. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, honestly, healing myself isn't going to help if I get attacked like that again, so I am just going to attack the one closest to me. Right. 21. As a note, you and you can you can take this back if you want. If you do mm -hmm. a ranged spell in uh, melee combat, you'll have disadvantage on it. Can I move over here and then do it? You can, but it might take in a swing at you. Yeah, because you're right next to it. Attack of opportunity. <sighs> damned if you do, damned if you don't. I mean, I'm just gonna continue what do i have to roll so so just roll just one more time again? and we'll take the higher one wait what oh wait i meant the lower, the lower one. one yeah i know uh you have to uh, another guiding bolt not the damage oh shit. yeah yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's that's good see if it'll hit. There. okay yay, oh yay, thank okay. god 21 so it so it hits um so yeah you're right next to it and you just kind of like guiding bolted right in the ribs and uh it's a sizable hit for 17. <sighs> all right anything else for family uh healing words bonus can i can i do that too um turn? because guiding bolt's a level one spell you can't do a extra spell gosh darn it then no. Okay. You can drink potions as a bonus action, just in case people forgot. Uh, all right. NPCs. Ardwell is going to take a shot at that one behind him. Uh, 14 just hits. It, hopefully I roll as good for the NPCs, right? I say that, and I just roll bad damage. <laughs> Twelve damage, though. Hey, yeah, that's that's something. Hey. Uh, huh. Um. You can see, uh, from the lower deck. Um. Running up, you see Priscilla and Geo. Um. Six. Ugh, that's not good for her. Uh, <laughs> Priscilla runs over towards where Ardwell is, and uh, Geo, you can see he immediately pulls out a ballista and re-readies it using his action so you don't have to, uh, so you can shoot again next turn, Gelnek. 
Mm. Um, it looks like it takes an entire action to reload these bad boys. Not um, that is much appreciated. It's just, just kill the thing, please. Um, <laughs> uh, Azru keeps uh, flying, and uh, Truly, you're probably the only one who notices this just with the, the combat going on, but because he's directly across you, you see um, Adokus just kind of like get into a stance like he, he he widens his his feet and like readies his feet his his hands and they're just like open palms and he goes and just hits like multiple strikes almost too fast for you to catch against this wyvern right next to you god damn you got e honda over here <laughs> okay uh most of them hit <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Die mucks, so we die get mucks. some of those good rolls on our side, please. Uh, this, uh, there's a lot of math with monks, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. He he hits this thing rapidly and then you notice he like pulls back real quick and goes in for like a like a punch directly in between the eyes as it like turns to focus his attention on him and the beast is gonna make a little bit of a save and fail you notice this beast kind of just slumps to the floor like it's trying to shake off like it just got hit by like like a tree fell on its head it's it's totally oh. stunned and just shaking Oh, lovely. Very nice. Hey, that's, that was good. <laughs> Gelnek, you are back up. Okay, seeing that this one is hitting the squishies, um, uh, instead of the ballista, Gelnek is going to turn back towards it. Hey, straight up, Gelnek told s small man that he is not going to die. And Gelnek does not like being proven wrong. Gelnek hates being proven wrong. And he's going to bang on his drum and cast Dissonant Whispers on it Ooh. at uh, third level. So, oh, wow. Yeah. So it needs to make a Wisdom save, DC 14. Fail. Uh, if it, ah, it fails. So it's going to take the full 22, and it needs to spend its reaction, moving its entire movement speed away from me. Okay, and, and this nice. is the one directly below you? Yep. This direct, so it has to go this oh, direction yeah, as far as it can. He's gonna fucking fly. Um, while Hang he on, does shoo, this, shoo. um, <laughs> Faley, if you want, you can make a melee attack against him as it flees from a attack of opportunity. Uh, sure. How would I? If you have like a quarter staff or something, it would just be click that. Oh yeah, yeah, I see that. Sixteen. 16 definitely hits for 6 damage. Nice. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um. How, how far does this boy move? Let's see. Uh, it's entire movement speed. 80 feet be. away. <laughs> uh, so I think even if it's, it does uh, come back, it's going to take an entire round because the ship's also moving. So it's it's basically moving half speed. That's a lot of movement. Back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Shoot. So we'll, we'll just Shoot. move. We'll just... Yeah, and you moved in the opposite direction we're moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was very good. Uh, okay, anything else for Gelnik? Yes, la another bardic inspiration. Strangely, uh, sh uh, short, <laughs> small man. <laughs> <laughs> Strangely, oh my God. There's a lot of small men. <laughs> Lots of small people getting names mixed up. Small man, Gelnik will hold up his promise. You will not die. Not yet. And give him a... Uh, uh, give Hobson a bardic inspiration as well that you may use on any attack roll, saving throw, uh, damage roll, or uh, armor class increase. Thanks, boss. And that <laughs> will be my turn. All right, Morenthal, you are up. Uh, okay, I'm going to get out my rapier and just start slashing the one that's right next to me. Okay. And... I will sneak attack it because it's currently on top of coil. Yep. 
<sighs> Does a 13 hit 13 damage? just hits. 13 is their AC. Oh, thank god. 13 sneak damage and 5 piercing then. Very nice. 18. Yeah, this one is... 18. Uh, this one's feeling it. <laughs> I, I wish it was feeling dead. <laughs> um. Um, and I'll end my turn there. Okay. Um, any on your turn? Thank you. You know, I appreciate that. <laughs> the DM loves <laughs> when someone says, and that's my turn. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> be you're up. Uh, question. So for the, for the, uh, the disadvantage for ranged spells, if it's a spell that originates at me, is that ranged? If, if it is a ranged spell attack, then yes. Um, if you're asking if Scrubbins shoot something, it has to be within melee of Scrubbins. But yeah, like, not that for for me because it's right next to me right now. Yes, if it's I, I if it's cast... like a spell that they need to save against, though, there's no disadvantage there. Okay, I want to cast Thunder Wave, which is a 15 foot cube originating from me in a direction. Right, and that's a save again. That creature has to save against your spell, correct? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. No. Thunder, thunder wave. wave. I also have thunder wave. It is a a a we spell that you don't need to make an attack roll. They need to make a saving throw. Yeah. So you they yeah. you don't get any disadvantage or anything on that. So, so think yeah, of it as yeah. like you're okay. you're making noise. They have to like resist hearing or like being affected by it versus you throwing a baseball. Like you got the aiming and having to yeah. make the it connect. Got it. Okay. Then I'm casting thunder wave. Um. With. So that's DC 15, Constitution. Wow, even with good con, it, it, it failed. Sweet. And then it's an additional 1d8 of damage. Damn, you good there? Yeah, um, I was just, there was a button on it, so I clicked Another it. <laughs> two of bonus damage to the eight from that. Um, And for Thunder Wave, um, it is also pushed 10 feet away from me. Um, I'm going to say because it's stunned, it like actually falls below the deck. Like it, it falls Whoa. the deck below you. So it's it's still like barely on the ship, but it is like its head is still spinning from the previous attack. Nice. I hope Grayton isn't asleep. <laughs> Grayton's like, fucking keep it down. Also, as a reminder, uh, Thunder Wave takes the form of a small rocking horse toy whose name is Constable Bulwarks, of which I am placing Proper Porridge on top of oh. to make that oh. an enhanced spell. Very impressive. Thank you. Lovely. Um, and then Scrubs is going to uh, fire on him with another Um So that's uh, 11 plus 7 is 18 to hit. 18 hits? And then the damage from that is another 2d8. Seven damage. And he's pushed another five feet away. Because he's stunned, I'm going to say he falls off the ship. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because you, push, you pushed him in two directions in one turn, and he doesn't have any saves, basically, because he's just... He's just out of spinning it. and flopping around. He's at it. So he he disappears into a cloud below the boat. Oh so we'll yeah. Just, we'll just do that. I, I look over my shoulder and give a thumbs up to Scrubbins. The Scrubbins goes. <laughs> <laughs> just a <laughs> mouth open, like. Yeah. Little chirp. <laughs> Very yep. good. Uh, That's my and I am my turn. Okay. Um. You you do not see okay. any more sign of uh, of, of this one. Uh, let me. That's the wrong button. The one then. that got stunned. Which is <laughs> something happened to. The one that, that Joe <laughs> fired off into the distance. Uh, the one that Joe fires off in the distance. You do see it. It's trying to catch back up, uh, but making very slow progress. So it's got like, if it keeps this up, it could maybe make it next turn back onto the battle map. Um. But it also you're not you're not sure. Um, it is still keeping up though. This one over here, uh, I think it flies. Uh, yeah, I think it's gonna fly up and like 15 feet off the ground. 
claw at Priscilla and Gilnick. Ooh. Okay. Um, twelve to hit Gilnick. Nada. All right. Oof. And it does with a thirteen hit Priscilla. Twelve. Priscilla's looking rough. Priscilla, oh, Priscilla no. kind of stumbles to a knee. She's still conscious, but uh, bad shape. Um, this one over here. Mm. We just pissed it off more. I think it's gonna try. It's, it's it's a it's an animal. It's gonna it's gonna try to get away. So if uh, Morenthal, you want to yes. take, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just, yes. Yeah. Uh, oh my god. Oof. Okay. Yes. A, a crit fail eight. Just makes it past you. Um, but it's like about ten feet away from the deck. Um. And just two claws come for you, Coil. We had some choppy right. clouds on that game. Yeah, that's why you missed. No one saw it. It's cause... fine. Are mm -hmm. oh, you reckless? Yeah, I reckless, so he gets advantage. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, okay. both they hit, hit anyway. but no crits. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you're, you're raging, right, too, right? Yes. Uh, 16, so 12 and 16, so 6 and 8 damage. So 14 damage total. It's already been half. Okay, 14 damage total. Mm -hmm. Um, And that is their go. Hobson, you are up. Hmm. I think Hobson will start. Yeah, I think Hobson will uh, use his action to try sprinting back to uh, this one, uh, to this ballista back here. Okay. And then you said earlier the bonus action, you can use a potion if you have on you? Yes. Yeah, if, Thank if you're drinking a potion, it's a bonus. If you're forcing someone to take a potion, it's an action. Okay, then yeah, I'll use bonus action to drink the potion I have on hand and see if it helps. Uh, let's see, 2d4 two, two plus 2. Uh, it's not a ton back, 6 HP back, but... It's hey, something. Is that double digits for Hobson? Yeah, it doubles my HP. Well, uh, if we don't count the temporary HP. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. No. <laughs> holy, holy hell. Yeah. That was a bad hit. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> nasty <laughs> when they hit. <laughs> but yeah, so that is that is Hobson's turn. I don't think he can't do anything at the Ballista this turn, but hopefully next if this thing's still coming back. Okay. Yeah, you, you get on it and like swivel it towards the direction. You're just trying to get a good shot. Uh, cool. Standing on tippy toes. <laughs> Right. Coil's gonna reckless again. Cause Ooh, let's go. Why not? I'm gonna great sword. Twenty-one to hit. Yeah, it hits. And that's twelve slashing and two rage. Okay, still it's it's still up. Still up. So he's gonna slap again. Twenty-five to hit. Twenty-five. Yes. Hits. It is and then, hanging on by a thread. Like it's it's ugh. having trouble just not even keeping up with the sheet, just like keeping aloft. Like all right, and that's his turn. Okay, oh. Faily. I am going to just attack the one that's uh, top right. Get it. Yeah. Oh. Hell yeah. Oh, also, you know what? We I forgot. I forgore. 
Um, when you hit someone with Guiding Bolt, the next attack against that creature has advantage. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause it like, it, it shimmers them in this like, kind of like the, the sparkling twilight that l your attacks have. The like, the, the little like stars and constellations. That's awesome. 23 to hit. Yeah. God damn. Fucking nice. 14 damage. Okay, yeah, it, it, it gets hit and you see this like shimmer around it that it's trying to like shake off and bite at. But it's still standing. That is all for my turn. All right. Um, let's see what happened. Uh, Priscilla's going, yeah, Priscilla's probably gonna just get up and attack with a little short sword. Not do much. Um. Actually, he's going to reload Ardwell up here. Uh, Geo comes up behind uh, you, Gelnick, and is going to just punch at it. He, he hits it and does uh, so much damage. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not too damage. Um, it was too damage. <laughs> uh, Adokus, though, does come up. Wow. Two hits miss, but one hits. Uh. All right, this one, this one's starting to, starting to feel it. Uh, and that is the NPCs. Gilnick. Okay. Well, um, seeing as uh they've got this one covered i'm gonna use a little bit of a healing word on who's the rough uh, the the kind of roughest looking crew ma mate definitely priscilla at this point priscilla okay well then i'm gonna healing a word um at second level just uh i don't know drum drum beep boom 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 as a pleasant i don't know yeah, just like a pleasant little... A backbeat to the rhythm. Battle, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she'll get a, a eight. That's my bonus action. And is Hobson on this ballista? Uh, let's see. Hobson, uh, Hobson's on the ballista. Wait, yeah, the one down here. Yes. Yeah. Okay, then... Okay, then he's got that one covered. Then uh, I'm going to take out my remaining singular maraca mace. To smack at this one, just beat it up like a JoJo meme. And just... <laughs> 23. 23 hits. Yeah, yes. Kabaja! Three damage. I bet it's really regretting facing me <laughs> now. <laughs> it runs Get away him. scared. That's the shaka 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 gun. Game's working the game. What do you mean? Uh, Chad's assassin me. That uh, will be my turn. All right. Back to Morinthal. Uh, okay. I'm going to just pull out my... No. Oh, crap. No, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move out of this one and give it a slap. Okay. Give it a sneak attack. 16 to hit. 16 hits. 18 damage total. Very nice. Uh, anything else? Uh, nope, that's all, thanks. <laughs> that's all, thanks. Mm -hmm. Truly. Uh, I'm going to start with Scrubbins. Who's going to fire force Ballista onto this gentleman to the right. Um, which is the... 1d20 plus 7, 21. Mm -hmm. So then that is 2d8 of damage, 7 damage. Um, and that's going to be pulled 5 feet rather than pushed. Okay. If that's something we can do. Yeah, I think I think uh, he can, Scrubbins can move in five, in 5 feet in any direction, right? He can push or pull. Originally, you can just push, but because he got upgraded with the green Void Crystal League. Right, pull. right, right. Okay, so he pulls. Which I don't think I've actually done before. So, 
this person fine? Who's just underneath here? They're, they're, they're kind of just like avoiding claws, but they're, it's a docus. He's fine. Okay. <laughs> um, and as for Trilby, I'm going to move in here. And I'm going to attack with my short sword. Hell yeah. 14. Oh my goodness. Trilby made a melee attack. <laughs> and hit. And hit. Yeah. World premiere. World premiere. <laughs> With my green ribbon and jingle bell hilted sword. <laughs> Whopped a wyvern on the head. And I want to use my bardic inspiration for more damage. Yeah, it's D D8. Six more damage, baby. Oh, Hell yeah. Wow. Okay, it, it's it's looking pretty and bad. Trilby's he's just, a barbarian. He's just screaming. <laughs> <laughs> he's more afraid of using a sword than he is afraid of the wyvern. Wow. I'm so glad someone used my inspiration. <laughs> and that I end my turn. Okay. For damage specifically. Right? <laughs> oh, Thank yeah. you, Joe. All right. It turns in both attacks against Trilby. No. <laughs> <laughs> Chops my head off. <laughs> Throws Trilby off the ship. All right, I think this one's just about caught up uh, with the ship. Um, that's its turn, though. This one, hmm. Hmm, what does it do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna just... Okay, he's he's gonna, he's gonna try to lift off. And like, as he's lifting off, he swipes out with his claws, one at Trilby and one at Adokus. Um, as he, that is who he's currently facing. Uh, wow, Trilby is uh, 12 to hit. So my AC is 12, but I have that extra button. So you got the button. The button saves oh. you. Finally, finally the button saves me. <laughs> you you could have sworn it. the claw like comes to hit you. And just at the last moment, as you like kind of close your eyes to look away, you, you, you see like an arcane like shield just slightly scratch against the claws that just disappears into nothing as soon as you look back. Oh my god. Your badge stopped the bullet. <laughs> it did. It really did. <laughs> Don't forget, take this book with you. Oh my god, the bullet. <laughs> oh my god. I'm so happy. Um, <laughs> it does hit Adokus though. It's gonna just do a little... Okay, yeah, he the one claw goes in and like sinks into the shoulder and pulls back and there's just a, a spray of blood as it rakes against Adokus's body, but he other than like the physical impact, he's not reacting to it. Damn. Uh and this one two attacks against Coil. It it goes with a claw and then as like it's kind of like grabbing you with the claw, the tail comes around to the side. Uh, 18 to hit. Get advantage. And, and tw oh, okay. Yep, yep. I think they're both no, in, yes, but no hit. crits. So 18 and 24 to hit. And make a constitution yep. saving throw. Constitution well, okay. saving throw. All Please right. tell me Coil's okay. What's Coil doing? What the Coil doing? What the Coil Constitution doing? saving throw. 15. 15 is what you needed. Oh, nice. Phew. Um, so from the... I do have advantage on saving throws against being poisoned as a Warforged. Okay, this is not being poisoned. This is poison damage. Okay. Cool. Which is a, it's very confusing, but it is a thing. <laughs> there is a difference. <laughs> there is a difference. I promise. Mm. I believe you. Mm. 13... Seven. Okay, so um, so on the first claw, it was 13 damage, so you take six. Okay. Um, and the the tail, you take seven piercing and seven poison, so just okay. seven total. Seven total, okay. Uh, and that is its turn. All right. Hobson. Yep. Hobson does his best to take aim at the remaining one that's been really nice and 
flown nice and close because he's never really shot one of these things before. Um, yeah, so it'll be just a d20 plus your proficiency bonus. Okay. B3. Is he on tiptoe trying to see over the ballista as he's aiming it? Yeah, <laughs> and then he looks over. So it's like, Captain, how do, how do I fire? Aim and shoot. Ah. <laughs> Do we, what's, what, where's the shoot button? Th this lever, and he just pulls it like as you're pointing the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, sorry what'd you say to roll? Uh, just a d20, and it'll be your proficiency, which is three. So d20 plus three. D20 plus three. 14. 14 hits, so go ahead and roll 3d8. All right. That seems Three, whoa. 300,000 damage? Wow. Oh, it, it explodes. <laughs> oh my god. 300 million. Oh, for, excuse for me. For those curious, uh, I rolled uh, three E8, which means something very different. Mm, apparently. <laughs> Let me try it again. <laughs> the hell I didn't know you could do that in this, in this uh, here right. program. <clears throat> 12. That's more like it. Okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> 12. It sinks in, like, right into the neck, and it's kind of, like, awkwardly trying to bite at it to pull it out. Um, it's kind of, like, messed up its flight pattern. Anything else for Hompson? Uh. I don't. Th oh, wait, wait, uh, so that was, it's an action to fire, but I still, like, have my move, yeah? yeah you still have your move in bonus, if you want. Okay, so that's. That thing has gotten very close, and I'd have to take a whole other action to reload this thing, and I don't know if I could survive a turn to do it, so I think I'm going to actually move back here with the crew a little bit for safety. Okay. Actually, no, I'm moving over to this one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's use this one. This one's still got a boost in it. Just, just, let me just turn this one around. Okay. Yeah, but that's my turn, though. All right. Coil. Disregard the ballista and just pull out a new one like Reaper. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are uh, reckless attacking again. Let's do it. Let's do it. 24 to attack. 24 hits for 13. Oh, can we can we seal the deal? It is still up. Wow. Okay. Hitting it again. 23 to hit. With a damage. final cleave, you just slice through one of its arms and wings and it just spurts blood and tumbles. It like hits one of the 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 fan oars and just falls into the clouds. It is Hell dead. Yeah. Woo! Woohoo! Nice. Right. I always push the wrong button there. And that is his turn. Wait, no, he can move. Mm -hmm. So um I'm gonna move him. Over here. Perfect. Is that a gap in the ship? Or it's it's that? like one of those um it, it's like a lattice, so you, there's like airflow from above. Oh, gotcha. Oh, okay. Got a little bit raised up. Yeah. I was wondering that myself. Gotcha. Yeah, probably I probably should have denoted that better. But <laughs> That's not so good. Now now coil has the high I just ground. I thought it was different different colored floor yeah it's 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 basically on the same level as everything else hell yeah okay perfect i thought it was a square right. mast <laughs> 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 it's just a giant square block of wood not the most aerodynamic but you know it gets the job done you know <laughs> it's magic airship enough, what matter. do you want <laughs> all right and that now is his turn okay Faley. uh nicole had to step out oh She's All right. feeling a bit sick. She oh, no. Feeling, she was feeling really bad. We will do some uh, NPCs. Okay. Uh, we will we will jump back when Nicole's back or feeling better. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so there's two hits. Gio's gonna give it his give it his all and miss, and Priscilla's gonna do the same and <laughs> miss. Why am I not surprised? Um, 
our duel is going to run back. One, two, three, four. Make it. And he has a axe at his side that he pulls out and just goes for this thing's leg. Uh, 13 makes it. For seven. Uh, and that is Lovely. NPCs. So we are we're back to Gelnik. Okay. Well, then I am going to continue to wail on this thing. Uh, however, I'm going to use a vicious mockery. You! We are Wyvern! Gelnik, whose stinky tribe have, have, has eaten many a drake meat. Gelnik believe you must taste just as tasty. So, wisdom save DC 14. Uh, if it fails, its next attack will have disadvantage. Okay. Um, it fails. <laughs> yeah, and it's going to take a little bit of psychic damage as well. <laughs> it's smart enough to know it was insulted. Is, and this was the top right one? Uh, yeah, the, yeah, this one by us that we're just ganging up on. <laughs> as you as you cast Vicious <laughs> Mockery, the, the creature just slowly turns to you as it's like bleed is blood is dripping from its mouth its, its wings are cut up and just like a final like sigh as it just falls limp on the deck no. you insulted yes. the deck <laughs> it, it, it literally had six health <laughs> finally Gelnick gets to taste cousin of drakes um, it's a glorious day for the flower crown tribe Hops in as you're as you're watching and you and you hear the creature fall behind you. You can see this one just it just does a sharp turn to the side and dips back below the clouds. Yay! Uh, and and we're out of combat. Oh my god! Well, no one died. It. No one. No one died. Holy Except shit! The wyvern. Except the wyverns. Except the wyverns. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Music, music, music. With that first round, I was like, oh, we're dead. It was a we're rough so first dead. round. It was, that was I really, was, that rough. first turd was brutal. Mm. was like, uh oh. <laughs> These wyverns know how to roll dice. <laughs> they, they roll really well. And if you fail the save, it's like 7d6 of poison. Jesus. What? Oh. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Holy <laughs> shit. Hobson can tell you that. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, the after the 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 battle calms down. Um, that's the wrong music. <laughs> You're very <laughs> victorious. We were very <laughs> triumphant. Um, the crew kind of like checks on each everyone is like making sure they're okay. Everyone's like bandaging themselves up if they need it. Um, you can even see like eventually. Uh, um, I, I forgot my own character's name. Oh no! Oh no! Uh, uh, Great job. Comes up from <laughs> below deck oh. with like a, a mop and a bucket and starts cleaning up some of the, <laughs> the, the, the blood and viscera left. <laughs> Just kind of indifferent to the whole situation. Um, but Dokus comes over to the group and go. That was a. Uh, I was rough for a little there. Is everyone okay? Still breathing? We good? Yeah, do, doing on, okay. <sighs> Another triumphant battle. Well done, tribe. That was very good. Yay. Yeah. Woo. Double leader, uh. did you see me? I, I used the sword. Yo, next saw you fight like true warrior. I did. I did. Coil, coil pats Flat. him on the back. And now with, we with feast like on true warrior. <laughs> with being pat on the back, he just <laughs> falls to his... Fuck onto his butt. <laughs> He's just the, the adrenaline crash just took him out. <laughs> Adokus, Gilnek would ask if we could preserve meat of wyvern here. I, I I'm on the same page with you. Do are you familiar with skinning one of these? Hmm, not specifically. Uh, Gilnek have experience with less winged, grounded cousins, drakes that not really flying. Perhaps meat different. And saucing and spicing may require difference. Uh, but there's, there's good willing meat to learn. There. We, could, we, we'll, we could figure it out between the two of us, I'm sure. Yes, Gelnek would love to increase variety of palate and tastes. 
Um, he goes, I'll, uh, I'll see what we have downstairs in terms for cleaning this up. But, uh, if you, if you won't mind, uh, we could, we could do this for a while. And he kind of goes below deck and finds, like, a nice knife for, you know, like, skinning and carving up the beast. Uh, because there is the one corpse just still just hanging out on the deck. Um, yes, perfect. Thank you. And the two of you, the two of you, go ahead and give me a survival with advantage. We'll see how the two survival of you do. Survival with advantage. All right. Huh? That's a crit right there. That's a crit. 25. Um, Woohoo! I'll say not only do you like preserve, uh, preserve like the meats and, and, and get the, the clean, nice cuts out of everything you want. Um, the, the, the teeth, um, the claws, and the, the stinger you, you actually like manage to keep intact. Um, so if like, if you or someone else wanted to get preserve the, the, the like poison within the, 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 the tail, you would be able to do that since you like manage to not like cut into any organ or whatever that might actually facilitate the poison production. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, hmm. or if you want just keepsakes from it, you've, you've got to. Noting this, I will, I don't know, put it in a, I don't know, a jar or some kind of safe container. Just eye the party and then look at Morenthal. Mm. <laughs> Go over to him. Here, perhaps you will use this to its highest potential, stinky drop. And <clears throat> hand him the, the poison claw. Or whatever talon. Alan. Mm -hmm. hmm. Thank you. Do you want mm -hmm. me to use it against you? Oh no, would be waste. Yonek resistant to poison after taking substance to try and build resistance. Hmm. Is that well, true? You know how to use poisons. Did you drink poison until you became immune to poison? Ah, uh, drink yes, immune no. <laughs> Not yet, though. <laughs> <laughs> Something Gelnip working on. <laughs> oh, the Gelnip In time. And then I'll uh, just try and find the tenderest parts of the the wyvern to save. I don't know the thighs. Yeah. The wings. I don't know if the wings can be turned into like chips or something. <laughs> Make mm. pork rinds out of them. Yeah, mm. the pork rind. Yeah, get the air fryer out. Mm. Yeah, you... carving. I was, I was just filling in my mind the, the monster hunter. <laughs> Do you get a gem? <clears throat> yep. We got, ooh, a, a large wyvern. Oh my god, gem. we got a wyvern oh, gem. Oh, I got a wyvern plate, guys. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, Whoa. With, the, with the crit, oh. like, you have more meat than you could probably cook within the trip granted maybe not for gelnick but it's like an in oregon <laughs> trail it's like you, you yeah. gathered five thousand pounds of buffalo and you can carry three yeah exactly damn <laughs> unfortunate but wyvern meat is still wyvern meat and it's new to gelnick and he is happy to take a new experience a new type of draconic meat Thompson's very curious to try it like hearing gelnick talking this like Cuisine up so much. Hobson's very curious to try. I, I just love the idea of a gillnet cooking show now. <laughs> oh my god! First, you use sugar. Cane sugar is fine, but Starbot has good substitute. <laughs> <laughs> I also just see it like no need to measure. Just eyeball everything. <laughs> Simply eyeball. Live a little. Um. Yeah. The rest of the day is is pretty uneventful compared to that. Um, the, the the skies are clear. Um, well, that, they're not clear. There is overcast today. That's right. Uh, it's a nice overcast, beautiful day. <laughs> Lightly snowing. Lightly snowing. Um, below deck. Chance of showers later on. Uh, Ardwill offers if 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 no one else goes to cook the the meat, he goes and offers to prepare the meal. As he seems to be the normal one responsible on deck. Gelnick will trust the cook, but observe his methods. <laughs> observe. He does he does dice like a butter basting for like the, the steaks that he got from the wyvern. He prepares like a few different dishes different ways. Just kind of mm -hmm. figuring out the best way to use the meat. 
Um, but it kind of just like lays out a, a buffet for folks to try and nibble on. Um, and other other than that, nothing really, nothing really big. I, I do have a, a good stopping point for us because I don't, I don't want to go too far without having Nicole here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, let's find one. But yeah, well, so real we'll, quick, I, 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 well, I wanted to do my, my bag. Do your bag. Do the bag. Do the bag. Uh, do I gotta do bag. my bag. When I said it earlier, I rolled a thirty-four. Thirty-four. Oh, uh, wyvern yeah. repellent. I get there, <laughs> yeah, it's wyvern. It's a can of wyvern repellent. Ah, yeah. oh, dang just it! Just when we needed it. Um, you pull out a a a singular feather. Um, it, it's it starts like white at the tip or the the base, and it slowly turns to like a. A, like a bright turquoise at the tip of it. It's just like Ooh. about like maybe a foot long. Just a, an, a pleasant intact feather. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, bag. You're welcome. <laughs> you can talk. You never asked. You're welcome. <laughs> I've been reaching into your mouth this whole time. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh I Stop hate it. Bit. Really, really, really explore the space. <laughs> um, you all have a, a, a quiet evening, so the the second day passes without incident. Um, the start of the third day, um, as the crew is kind of um, going about their business, um, checking the weather, making everything sure. It's a it's a pretty clear sky. There's a few scattered clouds and stuff. No turbulent weather. Um, but you do hear like the like bell from Azro of like signaling all hands on deck. Um, and as you go to the surface, you can see in the distance there is a, a hefty plume of smoke coming from like uh, a valley. Um, and Azro just points off and goes, It's a little village, uh, Ocross. We're, we're only about days away from Northcliff. It, it shouldn't, it's, I think it's on fire. It's even, not supposed to be smoking. No, even I mean, even what if they had a bonfire, uh, and they're not the w wildest bunch of folks, that's more smoke than it should be. Should we try to help them? You're the passengers here. I mean, I, I will go if you want. Me? Feel like we should help. I agree. And he uh, he writes the ship, and you start to do a little bit of a dive down. Your your stomach almost lifts like a little bit as he does this like rapid decline, um, and you start to approach the city of Ocross, which seems uh, to be in flames. And I think I think we'll wrap it up there oh, as no. you guys approach mm -hmm. this small little settlement. Um, but how do you spell that? O H K R O S S. Thank you. Um, and if you want to see them, uh, you're not too far from our destination. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Aww. We're just north of Northcliff. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much. I'm, I'm so oh, sorry Nicole yeah. wasn't feeling good. Yeah. Because I know, I know she, she also has a flight, soon. too. I know. Yep. Um, but thank you all. Thank you for the amazing session. Yeah. yeah. We thank got, you. We got a, a short little little jaunt of a flight left, and then we'll be in Northcliff, and we can we can see what that's all about. We had epic airship adventures. We had airship adventures. We fought wyverns and lived. I loved oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> Feels good to be back to this. It's been far too long. Yes. I, yeah. I definitely want to see if we could try playing more, because I miss it. I miss it. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm but uh, thank y'all. Does, does anyone have anything, closing remarks they want to say to chat before I go ahead and mute? And thanks, folks, for being too kind. Do the best, chat. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, chat. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Thank you all. For running. Y'all great? Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Love players, you. for being wonderful players to play with. Yeah. 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 All right. I'll talk to y'all in a few minutes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Bye. 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 Hello, chat. We'll do a little BRB screen. Uh, thank you, everyone, so much for joining. Sorry for the short session, but I don't want to. I don't want to go too far. Um, without Nicole.
but we'll pick this up. I'll let you guys know ASAP when we have a, a date set in place for the, the next episode. Um, I definitely want to try and see if we can do these more frequently just because I, I love playing and it's getting good. Did you plan for the episode to have so much robot poop in it? Absolutely. There was like two or three pages of notes just on poop. <laughs> a lot of poop. A lot of poop this episode. But it's like, it's one of those things of like, I feel like it takes us all to, you know, get a few, like a, a few minutes to get back into the game just from not playing a lot. So I'm like, I, I feel like if we play, try to make it a little more frequent, we can, we can remember what was actually happening. Cause I, I definitely have to like go back and listen through each episode beforehand. Cause I'm like, okay, what did, what did I say? Um, thank you so much, everyone. I closed my alert. So I've been slowly buying time while I pull them back open. Uh, thank you for all the follows. I appreciate it. Um, let's see. Where do we, where do we start? Uh, Midnight, thank you for tier two for 15 months. I'm just going to thank everyone and then we're going to wrap up just in case folks are like, I want to bail. Um, just going to thank you all for, for the support. Danjo's Dragons every day. I would love it. I would die, but I would love it. <laughs> uh, Anki Mana, thank you for the 120 bits. Give me a username. Thank you for 34 months. That's almost here. Uh, Whisper, thank you for four months. Heck yeah. Barry, 52 months at tier two. What the hell, Barry? Got that damp a dumper, though. Uh, Universal Fireworks, thank you for the gifted sub. Uh, Nicole, thank you for the sub. Oh, a gifted sub to Meat Clown. Hell yeah. I'm sure Meat Clown will love their sub. <laughs> Calvi, thank you for 45 months at tier two. Holy smokes. Uh, Universal Fireworks gifted out three more subs. Thank you. Naru, thank you for the 26 bits. Tom, thank you for 20 months. Anonymous gifted a sub to Jax. Also, yo, if you're not following Jax, they they make little doodles for the stream, and it it I die. I love them so much. It 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 makes it makes my month just looking at them. Um Joe, thank you for 48 months. What the heck? Smooshy, thank you for 52. Uh, Midnight, thank you for 150 bits. Buster, thank you for 100 bits. Um, and thank you for all the follows. And Mel, oh, thank you for three months. I missed that. Thank you guys so much for all the support. Uh, I really appreciate it. Normal stream tomorrow, uh, if you'd like to hang. I don't really know what I'm going to be doing, but I'm probably going to be doing another Marbles, which, hey, if you want to force me to play a game, uh, Marbles is your chance to do it. I'm trying a new thing that other streamers do and I was like that looks fun um so hey we'll do that tomorrow um let's find someone to read <laughs> it's it's always it's always fun seeing like how how much I prepare for a session and how like sometimes I feel like I cover everything and more within a session and then sometimes I'm like I dipped my foot in the water Just gotta win marbles in Kingsfield. Who we got? <laughs> uh, Asa's doing some Ishin. Cat links on. I haven't ran into Cat in a while. Let's say hi to Cat. Sp spread the spread the raids around. Cat's doing some Resident Evil Four. Looks like they're prepping for the the the, the remake. Um, but if you if you don't like spooky games, also doing some uh, Ishin. And I appreciate y'all hanging. Thank you so much. Have a good night. See you soon. Bye, y'all.